Hi guys and welcome to another episode of the Boxing Coalition. My name is Cam. Joining me tonight, Naota and Leon. Hope you guys are well. Two cards in the UK. Not really much boxing outside of the UK. Leon, I'll start with you. Your wife, Ruth's hometown, Leeds. Warrington, Leeds. Kiko. Um, I said it last week. and I, I know I was kind of like sitting on the fence between is Kiko shot or will he cause Warrington issues and I was I was leaning towards causing Warrington issues and he definitely did that yeah well we kind of previewed it at, at first thinking you know what if Kiko isn't shot and then we thought oh he might be shot and he, he could lose quite easily but he clearly still has something a lot to offer and you know he gets beaten by good guys he doesn't get beaten by um you know Josh Warrington level fighters and I don't think he did get beaten I think he won that fight um, I thought he won it 8-4 I, you know I gave a the latter rounds you know he, he, he nearly swept that last six you know for me he got hurt in the six and I gave that to Warrington and then pretty much I gave everything in those latter rounds to Kiko because he was doing the work he was landing the meaningful punches Warrington was backing off. Warrington usually would sit in the pocket, won't he, Cam, and trade? Yeah, he, did, he, he did, couldn't. He, he, did. he he couldn't live with that. No, he didn't look comfortable in the pocket. He didn't live with that, and if he can't live with that, then there's no point in him fighting for a world title at the moment because he okay. might not get stopped, but he doesn't beat anyone. Um, regarding like sweeping the yeah, I, I had him Kiko winning like eight onwards. I had a bit close. I had it seven five. <laughs> The difficult part is one of those. Fights I can see cause... that. I can see that eleventh round was difficult to score. Yeah, the eleventh was definitely difficult. There were there were a few of the early ones, especially like the first one was quite difficult. Um, there were a few others where, you know, it was Kiko's aggression and like he was throwing a lot of shots, but a lot of them were like, um, elbows and. Josh didn't get caught clean loads of times. Uh, you can't really see say you got a beat up. I know he had uh, after the fight he had a bit of bruising over his left eye, but like he 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 blocked a lot of shots, but. It, it, not to that body though he was working that body wasn't yeah, he that right hand yeah, the, body, like the, body, the body work was, was Martinez's I was, best stuff I was scoring those latter rounds on him coming forward and that body work pretty much yeah I had it 7-5 to five, uh, but I had Kiko yeah. winning I can see a draw and if you do maybe score some of the close rounds towards Josh, I can say like seven five to Josh, but eight to four is just disre- disrespecting Kiko because he went in there and he put a he put a big effort in and yeah he, he seemed to take it well like he, he didn't argue afterwards, but that's co- I, I, and Warren afterwards saying oh, oh how, how did that how did that judge have a draw like well how did that judge he have had him by, up by five yeah it's yeah. crazy man I don't yeah. know that's the thing like even 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 if he didn't necessarily feel robbed he probably should have made more of a fuss just just because I mean. I'd imagine he probably had the mentality, like, I'm not going to get a close decision here. But still, I mean... It, yeah, he looked I defeated. Yeah. He, he, he looked defeated as soon as that bell rang. He knew what was coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He knew yeah, it's it. unfortunate because, I mean, I had a 7-5 for him also. Um, you know, I, I thought that he was kind of slowing down in the mid-rounds. Um, he managed to catch a second win a little bit later on. And he did really nicely in the in the championship rounds. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Warrington, he, even though he was able to kind of um, stun him a few different times early on, uh, I think a lot of his shots were a little bit too slappy. They, they, he wasn't really sitting down on them and really giving Martinez a lot to think about. And I think that's a big part of why Martinez continued to kind of wait forward after throughout the, most of the fight. And um, just, I think, land the more telling blows, even though I think Warrington kind of outworked him. And so that's how I imagine the, the the judges probably gave it to Warrington just because of the fact but, that he was fighting more often throughout a lot of the rounds. But not in those late, in those later rounds. He made him back up multiple times. And I think he hurt him to the body multiple times. I think, I don't see how you score those last rounds, especially those last four. Maybe the 11th was close, but he was winning them rounds clear to me. Because Warrington was not hanging around. He, like you said, he wasn't sitting down on his punches. It's because Mart- Martinez wasn't giving him time to. Because he yeah. knew if he stayed there too long, he was going to get hurt to the body. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of funny because, incidentally, it's um, it's almost like a style that, that Martinez has kind of ate up in the past. I mean, like he ate up Matabula. He ate up Pozumi Hasegawa. These kind of taller, like more finesse, finesse fighters that don't really have a big punch. You know, he could just, just right, bum rush them. And you know, just break him down. He was doing that, a good bit of that to to Warrington as well. So I, you know, I think Warrington looks like he's got a reasonable chin, but 
that body does seem like I mean he 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 was folding up a few times wasn't he yeah. and then Kiko was um he was wandering the line wasn't he between low and right on the money so but you know you got to expect that yeah <laughs> my disappointment was I watched it twice cuz I missed the f- first few rounds when I watched it live and cuz I was kind of hopping back and forth between the sky card but my disappointment was after the fight, just before they announced it, I knew, I thought, Kiko's not going to win this on the cards. And when you, when you already know that the scoring in your country is pretty bad, where a guy that worked his half off is not going to get the decision, man, it's, 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 it's disappointing, man. Because I don't blame guys not wanting to come over. Like, we're, we're going to Javante Davis next week, and I, I'm glad, you know, he he's took the opportunity on his first defence to come overseas and, you know, he, he must be confident in himself, which is good to see. But I understand why a lot of guys don't want to come over to the UK or come over to Germany. I, I think the UK is like, almost overtaking Germany in the sense of the bad cars we've had in the last few years. But the irony was, it was the British guy who scored it a draw. I know. That that's but fine. I, but know, I just I it's, don't know. It's the other guys that must be getting like treated well when they come over and like high class oh, hotels. Oh, absolutely, and like nice little holiday. Exactly. So that's my disappointment. Regarding Josh, I, I think he's kind of like European level at best. The only way I could see is maybe if a belt holder goes up to thirty and vacates, and he has you know um, a shot at a vacant title at a guy that's the, diff- the, the difficult situation is like top 10 featherweights like uh, he probably struggles with with all of them like there's probably not one guy where he's got an easy fight and like Warren said it afterwards like well I'm not going to put have him you... in there in the fight he's going to lose so uh, we'll have to look at the route which is going to be the you know which uh, which suits his style but I don't think you know there's an easy fight in the featherweight division for him title wise have you got a top 10 there like do you have? Have you got a page open with that might have a top ten on it? Because I bet there's not many people you'd pick to beat. Him. You'd pick him to win in a, in a top ten. Yeah, I can open the. I fight, mean, just fight news. Just going things. off the top. As I say, just top going head, off yeah. the top. Just going off the top of my head, I could go like Oscar Valdez, Gary Russell, um, Leo Santa Cruz, Abner Frampton, Morris, Selby. Uh, yeah, Frampton five. Selby. I think Jojo. I'm, 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 this is no particular order. Yeah, um, Jojo uh, Diaz probably Jojo beats Diaz. him. Yeah. yeah, Jorge Lara. Uh, um, Mares, Jesus, Jesus Rojas. That's nine. Mares. Um, yeah, yeah. I already, I already said Quig. Mares. Quig. Uh, yeah, I could probably. Mariaga. Mariaga probably beats him. Oh yeah, yeah Mariaga. Mariaga. Yeah, 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 Mariaga. Yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah, saying, man. Quig is another name. I think. I think Quig, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think honestly, Quig's I, got I that think... work for him. Galahad yeah, would yeah. beat him, I think. Personally, the only two guys I, I I could see him potentially beating would be Selby, especially with the inactivity, and um, and Quig. But uh, but even then, I, I mean, I think Quig is just too rugged for him, and um, you know Selby's Selby might too be big too, too 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 yeah. I don't know. I like Josh, but yeah, I think European level at best. Um, I'm not really now, sure else to um, ask you guys got anything. You know, Steve, Steve Wellings was saying. On on the asylum, what about if Warrington? Um, because um, what Rigandale was saying that he would f- come up for for someone, for to come up for a champion, or you know, what if he and he Steve was saying, oh, what if he took that fight and just took it, even though he knows he's gonna lose, but he would be, fought the bogey guy and it might you know, the bogey man saying, look, come on guys, fight me. Well, we've said that before, you where you can take a fight, you can lose, but yeah. you can come away better off than you were before because of your performance. So I think that'd be a good fight for him because if he performs well, then more doors are going to open. I thought it was an interesting interesting question that uh, that Steve posed. And I thought, you know, if you can get it done, you might as well, but it could be fucking boring, <laughs> you know, because I don't, I don't he might it's... school him. But, you know, yeah. I think if you're going to fight... Rigging now, you just got to go for it, haven't you? If he knocks you out, he knocks you out. But I mean, you might as well just go in there and go for, really go for it. But I mean, that could be interesting, couldn't it? It could be definitely. I mean, good good question there from Steve. Um, Neil, do you got anything else about regarding this fight? Nah, I mean, I pretty much uh, said my piece. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> even though Martinez t- got the the loss officially, you know, I think I definitely think he's still you know a fairly viable. Fighter what about him versus Mares? Yeah, that'd be 
Yeah, it'd be a great fight, wouldn't fight. it? Or maybe um, him versus, uh, what do you call it, uh, Claudio Marrero. Yeah. And what do you think, did that make that quick victory look better? But everyone was, there was that thing where they, he had a short camp for the quick fight. But does that quick, does that make that quick fight victory look better? Um, I'd say so. I mean, uh, yeah, you got to say so. Bit, a, a, a fair bit in terms of just like kind of trying to level people off, in, like where where they actually stand at at the weight class. You know, it just goes but... it just goes to show that even though Martinez is short, I mean, he's really not a small guy. Like you know, he's he's a short dude with not a very long reach, but you know, he's he's a you know he's one of those stocky strong guys. He's like a curtsies or what have you. Uh, even even at the weight class, you know, he's not really physically outmatched by very many people. You know, he could definitely still outmuscle you. I think really tall guys give him trouble, like Leo Santa Cruz dealt with him. Yeah, well, and the league. thing is, Santa Cruz yeah. is a really good boxer as well. Yeah, like, I think yeah. he gets underrated in that regard, so it's really difficult for him. And then just guys that to get have close big to him. punches. Yeah. yeah. And then just guys that have big punches would be really troublesome for him. But I mean, if you're a tall guy without much of a much of a, a crack or a snap to your shots, then I mean, he could he could definitely do some damage in there. Frampton, and you got to remember Frampton did a number on him twice and that was good keep that was like the best key code. But that's still good win yeah. for him. Aren't they really yeah, good? Yeah, wins, well, really? and and I mean that's that's just the thing, you know, that's that's a that's a different level, you know, that's that's still like about the highest level at Featherweight, you know. Frampton still yeah. went yeah, yeah, two close yeah. fights with Santa Cruz and I think he would give close fights to just about anybody there. Um and maybe even <laughs> at one thirty if he's moving up there, but we we'll, we could get to that later. Yeah, yeah. Alright, let's just uh, move down on the car quickly. I know um there's not much to cover. We'll talk, I guess, quickly on Nicola Adams because I know both of you guys saw the fight. Well, actually, Leon, I'm not sure if you saw it. Oh, yeah, I saw it because um, Ruth wanted to watch it. She know from Leeds and all that. Leeds. All right, Leon, you start. Uh, but, now, but that, I mean, not much to say. I mean, did, did, was she really fighting someone two weights below her? Is that, did I hear that right? Well, Bunce, well, Bunce did say that, and uh, I, I've got... Um, a bone to pick with that, but looking at her, we'll come to Bunce later. Ruth got words for Bunce. <laughs> yeah, looking at her record, she has well when she debuted at in 2016, she was fighting. Uh, yeah, two. Well, yeah, she just one. looked too small. It just like everything yeah. that Adams landed seemed to really kind of not rock her, but just kind of physically move her. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, uh, looking just looking at her box work and everything, like uh, Salazar, it looks like she'd probably be ideal as a light flyweight, and she just kind of took this fight because obviously she was going to get paid. So, um, and it was yeah, an eighteen-year-old I mean, woman versus a thirty-five, you know, thirty-five-year-old woman. It's going to be a, you know, mm-hmm. it felt like a physical mismatch to me. Yeah, physical experience level, etc. Yeah, but I mean, the stoppage was a bit like. I mean, that girl had nothing for her, but she didn't really land much in that stoppage. But, I mean, she, she was throwing nothing. She, yeah, she missed a lot on that stoppage. And it just seemed yeah. like, okay, she didn't get the knockout in the first fight. Let's get her a knockout in this fight. And I don't know, technique-wise, I don't really rate Nicola Adams. Um, Not like Katie. I mean, that, I'll give that to Katie Taylor. She punches, her punch technique is a hell of a lot better than Adams. Yes, yeah, right. Like, like, Nicola doesn't throw the... The, the backhand straight, man. It's kind of she always loops it a bit, and she doesn't really throw the jab straight either. Like, that's she has, true. Like, a that's weird kind of loop to that too. Yeah, and the accuracy isn't really that good. And uh, I don't know. I don't want to shit on her too much, but like, te- technique wise, uh, she, yeah. she's not that good. Got it. Yeah, it's one of those things. I think we, we you got to really wait to wait till she's fighting somebody elite, you know, to to really see it or not. You know, I think that's kind of the way it is with. Uh, the female fighters generally, just because there's such a big gap between like the top five in any weight class and you know the bottom of everybody else. It's a big gap. Yeah, I mean, if there's if there's people who can match her, she'll be in fun fights because she seems to throw a lot of punches. So I mean, it could be interesting, but I bet she's it's difficult to take to get anything from this fight. But I bet you, sh- if we see her against a, a better person, she'll be a bit open when she's throwing. Yeah, what, but I what? think that people will be able to land on her. One thing her and BT Sport slash Box Nation were making a big deal of before the fight was the whole three-minute rounds. And I actually agree because if you watch the other fight and you watch other ladies' fights, they seem very frantic because they know, you know, they haven't got much time. And if someone does kind of maul them a bit and hold them, 
it eats away at the clock and they don't really have time to set up shots and in that first round I could see she felt a bit more comfortable she was she was looking for openings rather than in that first fight in in Manchester in the in the debut she just looked frantic like she just she rushed it throwing. exactly so maybe the advantage is there I don't know what's going to happen and I think the WBC have said that they're not going to sanction these and I don't know if it's just three minutes and then title fights will still be 10 rounds or if they actually want to compete for the 12 rounds so. it's fucking it's fu- for me I think it's just bullshit I mean if you were I, I would it seems like Nicola Adams wants the three minute rounds and she should and they should fight three minute rounds it's the same sport what about the championship I, though 12 or 10 I, look, I, I think there's you see some people I think that a, a woman can do 12 rounds why not why not? Honestly, yeah, why not? I mean, you see, I, some I of the fat messes that, they're, they're, see some of the fat messes that get in the ring in the men's game and they make it through 12, 12 rounds. I mean, they're, they're just like if you go like to, to like distance running, there's no like women's marathon that's shorter than a men's marathon. You know what I mean? It's in, it's the same type of endurance type sport. I mean, although they're not punching each other, but still, I, still, run, I mean, the female they don't boxes, run 70 meters, do they? Yeah, they when they're not they hitting each other they're not hitting each other as hard as, as as men anyway. So I mean, to me, it's really more of an endurance thing as opposed to a to um like a violence thing. And I think that I think that they could do it. I mean, th- there's a lot of men's fights that I think could probably still do 15. You know what I mean? Uh, oh yeah, loads. On the fighter, but but um, you know, that's not. I would love there. 15. I, I definitely think the females could do 12. I ain't got I'd time for 15, 15 rounds, man. You. If, if if I had to watch 15 rounds continuously, man, like, the Box Coalition would start on, like, a Wednesday because I'd need, like, Monday, <laughs> Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday day to, I mean, to, be, get, to be fair, to be fair, so I, think, I, think, I think, yeah, I was going to say, there's, there's a lot yeah. more guys that can't do those last three. There's a lot of guys yeah. out there, too. You know, there's, and there's a lot of champions, too. A lot of elite, like, level champions that would flounder, that would fall apart. No, the, the, last, the last three would just be a hug fest. We'd just be holding each other for... I bet you get, bet you get more knockouts. You probably would, but you still got to watch 13 yeah. rounds. <laughs> 14 rounds. <laughs> That's true. No, and, and what Cam's saying is true, too, about, about that. I could think the holding also, unless they were to, like, really strictly penalise it. You know, like, I think wrestlers should probably strictly penalise it more than they do now already. So. Yeah, because you hear it with professional fighters are, the, are weirdos, aren't they? Because one minute it's a foul, and then when their mate's doing it, they go, oh, it's a tactical, great tactical move. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just a foul. It is. To me, it's both, but I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's a foul. Period. I mean, it's, it's yeah, like it's saying foul. that. I mean, it's like saying that you know, leading with your head is a great tactical move, or hitting a guy in the balls is a great tactical. I mean, sometimes it is, but you know, if you can get away with it, but it's still a foul. Yeah. It's still illegal at the end of the day. But yeah, I'm glad Nicola Adams asked because she, she asked for the three minute rounds, didn't she? Yeah. Good on her. Her and Esparza have kind of been uh, campaigning about it, so obviously, Esparza was the first to do it. Um, Last week or the week, whenever it was. But um, just quickly on Bunts, you know, I'm a fan of Bunts. It's a small club, not many of us in it. But I don't know, Leon, since this whole BT Box Nation partnership, he's, he's been pretty bad. He's just got him, he's just, I don't know, he's kind of, it seems to me like he feels he's got to sell it more than he does when he's on Box Nation. And it's like he's like this on five, when he's on BBC cam as well. He, he'll pluck statements out of fucking thin air, nothing to back them up. He, he he's a mess at the moment. Yeah, go he's on. Over, I mean, I mean, I, Ruth was like, "Who is that on TV?" And I was like, "All oh, right, that's Bunce." And he's like, "He looks like he smells and lives in his car," and that is <laughs> summed it up to me. Like uh, he's just giving off a. He just looks a bit washed out, doesn't he? Like the pressure's getting to him. Yeah. Ruth was ruthless, uh, but yeah, 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 going back to... Sam and Woodall, Woodall was being a bit of a homer at first, wasn't he? Yeah, well, I want to get to Woodall as well, but um, just yeah. just on Sal- uh, Salazar's comment that you made here. But let's get this absolutely right. Salazar is two weights slower. There's nothing wrong with that. That's called good matchmaking. Come on, man. You can't say that. There's, <laughs> there's nothing He's wrong with that. Com- That's called com- good matchmaking. Come on, punts. That's what good I mean. Match- good homer. matchmaking is, is getting somebody prepared. For you know a higher level, you know, not just throwing somebody in there and to, like throwing uh, a sheep amongst the wolves. That's exactly what that was. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that got past Dempsey. That Big. was like that was like that scene from Jurassic Park when they have the goat in the the raptor cage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Leon, it's interesting you mentioned Dempsey though, because we're kind of lucky that BT employed him because usually he does keep Steve in check. Yeah, he let that one slip, but. I'll tell you one thing he's not letting go, and that's how bad Chavez was, was he? 
Instead, oh, we'll get, we've got a Mexican warrior here, unlike last weekend, like three or four times. <laughs> Sticking the knife in the week later. One, wasn't he? Yeah, he was indeed. But, you know, like Josh Jass and uh, um, a few other people in the chat talking about Woodhall, and you just mentioned him as well there. I don't know. When you're starting to do, like, pad work and you go to do a VT with Josh Warrington, that is Jim, for some footage that you're going to play before his fight, uh, you're getting a bit too... Pally pally man, and then you get you are gonna give him the close rounds or give ten tens when he's um, convincingly lost uh, a round. And it's I think when you're a commentator, you gotta stay independent, man. But he had to, to be fair to him. He did start scoring some of those later rounds for Kiko because he knew he couldn't get away with it. I mean, but on Sky they would have found a way. But I think the problem is he re- he repeats himself so much, doesn't he? Like one week from the next, it's the same kind of little sound bites. Yeah. I just wish they'd put Barry Jones on it with Rawlins. It's a perfect combination, and then they could have Woodhull there as the the fucking spare part, can they? If, if I was and have fucking, a three man panel. If I was Barry Jones, I'd be pissed off that they've ditched me for this BT um, transition because I think he's much better. I, I like Woodhull, but I, I prefer Barry Jones. Um, like you like yeah. you like Woodhull when when you weren't hearing him every week. It's a bit different now. We're getting him on a bit of a regular yeah, like, basis. Isn't channel it? Channel Five Woodhull is excellent because he seemed more independent. But this, yeah, I think he must be getting like big direct checks now from BT. Where before I think he was getting smaller checks, so he didn't give a fuck from Channel Five. But yeah, it's it's a shame because I'm a fan of Woodhull. But the word salvo, I don't know. I don't like that. Yeah, I just think you know, I just. I think the problem is, you know, you move up the levels and you become more and more um, ingratiated and better paid, like you said, by your employee. You know, all, it happens everywhere, doesn't it? It happens in the States, it happens here. They, all these guys are pretty much homers. Apart from Barry Jones, he always seems to be quite fair. Yeah, he, he is. He is. And Rawlings does a good job. I think Rawlings, Rawlings will score pretty, pretty, you know, fairly. To he the does, away guy, I don't like Rawlings for some reason. Like he's not a he's not a, ma- a good like main commentator in my opinion. He's the best we've got, and that's not that's not saying much, is it? That is true. Because we got because now Ian, we need to bring back Ian Dark, but that's never happening. I, I mean, People no, are always asking him; he's never coming back. No, nah, like Ian Dark was just a legend, man. But um, just going yeah. back to Barry Jones, like he is independent but like anytime women's boxing gets mentioned man he always has to mention Jane Couch it's, it's like he's got a secret, yeah, yeah, yeah. secret crush on her or something <laughs> yeah. um, alright let's move on I don't think you two have seen anything else on this card have you I saw the big the knockout what we, when we were talking about earlier Cameron the big you know yeah, the so guy begins the C8 super middleweight Zach Jelly is, is his second fight against yeah. the, the Sheffield guy Chris yeah. Dutton it was it's a good knockout a but like a, a, a lot of it was because, you know, he, he fell over, bent his knee, while well, he bent his ankle in it when he was falling backwards, and, yeah, he's kind of uh, damaged something there. And But the shot that caught him, he, he got hit flush, and he doesn't seem like a big unit, as um, some commentators would say. And I don't know. I, it's a bit early to, for me to give an opinion. He does look quite raw, but he definitely looks like he carries a bit, a bit of power. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Uh, he does look raw, but he's young, young, isn't he? Like nineteen or something. Um, is Have he... I got that wrong? Uh, my... I thought he was really, really young. He is nineteen. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they got time. So he's like one of those guys. It's like it's too early to comment on, other than that. Uh, yeah. oh, it looks like he can punch. Yeah, yeah, but you know, you know, he's gonna he's gonna fight no one until like his twenty fifth fight, though. Right? Exactly. So we can just keep him on the back burner. Yep. Anything else? Did you catch Leon? No, nothing else. I heard there was a good fight, a couple of good fights on that card. Other fights on that card, though. Yeah, I'll just quickly go through him. Um, Josh Leather versus uh, Philip Sutcliffe Jr. at um, 140 for some vacant IBF bullshit belt. But it was a good scrap, man. Obviously, the 140 belt's a bit tied up with Nurse, and I think that um, to Southpaw from Chorley, I can't remember his name now. Um his name escaped Catrol. Catrol, Catrol. Catrol, yeah, I think he's going to be fighting there soon. So they've, they've took him down this IBF, IBF trinket route. But, um, yeah, Leather, I've seen him before. He's pretty decent. Trained by a Pakistani guy as well, the Imran uh, name. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a kind of classic matchup. The Josh Leather's 
a bit taller, rangier. He was kind of on the back foot, keeping uh, Sutcliffe at bay with the, with, with just the kind of straight punches, classic boxing technique. And Sutcliffe was trying to get close, but um, he couldn't really, um, he couldn't really close the distance. Um, and he was getting caught with pretty full of shots at um, at times. But I think we went into the sixth and um, Foster man, classic Howard Foster. Sutcliffe got caught with a few flush shots and Foster just jumped in and I, I thought it was premature. Most of uh, the people I saw on Twitter thought it was a pretty bad stoppage and uh, I won't mind a rematch if they if they decide to have it, but they're probably going different directions. But I, if I was Sutcliffe, I'd feel a bit unlucky. He, he, in the post fight, he, he took it well and congratulated Lever and he, he did ask like you know he he did say that he wasn't hurt and he, he wanted it to continue. But um, yeah, good little fight. I heard I heard he was a little bit just he maybe. Got a little bit buzzed, but nothing else. Nah, he like he got caught with a flush shot, and then another one straight after it, and like you know, Foster man, like he, he he's, he's too, a fucking oh, he's too tr- uh, trigger happy man. Like as soon as he sees anything type of, uh, he just jumps in and. Uh, so he know, didn't he didn't fall back to the ropes. He didn't really move. He didn't like dip his knees. He he, he maybe dipped slightly, but he, you know he regained his balance straight away and. Uh, Sometimes you know afterwards, like they have the the the, the panel, and they say, "Well, it's, it's it's better to have it, you know, one shot too early and one shot too late." I understand that, but if that was the case, you won't get like fights like Castillo Corrales, because you know, like the guy would have got stopped after the first knockdown and shit. So you have to let guys like give give them a chance, because that's how you have you know fight of the year candidates and shit, because the guy gets the opportunity to fight his way back. So. Uh, I'm all for guys, you know, keeping their health in, in in check and not getting hurt just for the sport that we love. But you have to give them a bit of a chance. I think so. Unless you're pin, if that's if you're standing in the middle of the ring and you haven't really, you haven't backed up to the ropes or stumbled backwards. I just think, you know, you've got you've got to be you've got to be on the you've got to take a knee or something, haven't you, for the ref to jump in? I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, just. Towards the rest of the undercard, uh, Jazza Dickens had a pretty... It was a good fight up until the stoppage against uh, Thomas Patrick Ward. Dickens bought, beat his uh, older brother, uh, I think, in the last defence of the Super Bantamweight British title. And uh, No, he, it was a couple of fights ago, sorry. Um, and, yeah, Jazza was quite disappointing, I thought. I've seen him a couple of times, obviously, the Regal fight. Did he get stop-stopped? Like, no, no, no. The rest... No. Jumped in, or was it a cut or something? Yeah, it was a cut from a head clash. But we we we've seen most people seen maybe Jazza before when when he um, broke his jaw in the second round against Rigo, and there was another good fight he was involved in against Kid Galahad a couple of years ago. Uh, where I thought Galahad was losing it up until he he managed to stop him in the tenth. But yeah, Jazza was just waiting too long. Like he 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 was on the outside while well. Ward kept him on the outside. Ward was just in and out. Uh, he he'd be on the outside, one two, back on the outside, and Jazza was just waiting, waiting, waiting for opportunities. He was like throwing lead, like he's a southpaw, and he was just trying to throw like lead left hands to the body, but from far too out, and they just landing late. Um, he, like after the sixth, he kind of started to work a bit. I think I'd give him the fifth, and then the sixth, um, and he was doing a bit better, and then. I don't know if Ward was tiring a bit or he was just kind of conserving his energy a bit. And then Jazza threw this kind of right hook and cuffed Ward and then pulled him down a bit. And then they clashed heads and um, Ward got a bad cut, I think, over his left eye. And then it was stopped and went to the cards. And um, a rematch would be fine, but I think in a rematch, if there's no kind of head clash situation, I think Ward maybe wins more convincingly. But the only only question is whether he's going to be able to, you know, go the whole twelve rounds because he did look like he was fading a bit. So maybe um, that's going to be in the back of his mind if they have a rematch. But pretty good fight uh, on the undercard, and uh, it's it's one we kind of uh, missed last week. Uh, it went on the radar. A few people mentioned it to me afterwards. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty decent fight, Leon. If you're bored this week, something to uh, Something to catch. Um, yeah, I'll fire that up. Um, Nurse was in the eight rounder. I didn't televise that. Um, Bob Adjusef was on there as well. But that's about really it for the for the Leeds card. Should we move on to Birmingham? Ugh. Yuck. 
Where should we start in Birmingham? Uh, I think Neil, to you only saw the 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 headline fight, didn't you? Yeah. Do that first, Cam. Because I, I only watched a couple of rounds of that, so you do that first, then we'll do Eggington. All right. Your thoughts on that fight, Neil? Um, you know, I, I really kind of uh, downplayed the the challenge of this fight simply because I thought, considering um, what I had seen of Muranaka and what I had seen of Yafai, especially recently against Concepcion, that Yafai was just you know, significantly uh, levels above Muranaka. But, I mean, Muranaka gave a pretty scrappy effort in there. Um, I think he made Yafai kind of work for every round he won. I actually had it a, a bit, cl- uh, you know, a, a fair bit closer than the judges did. Um, I had it 116 to, to 111, you know. Yafai got the knockdown, what was it, in the second round, I believe. Um, but Muranaka hurt Yafai, I thought, a few different times in the fight with um, the shots to the body as well as a couple of left hooks to the head. Um, you know, I thought he was countering with the left hook really nicely over a lot of uh, Yafai's jabs and right hands. Um, you know, Yafai, I mean, for all the bluster that they've been talking about with regards to him and unifying and fighting Roman Gonzalez, I I can't see him winning those, those like, truly, like, elite-level fights. Um, but, I, I mean, like, it just, just be, especially based off of what I saw here with uh, Mononaka, it seemed like Mononaka's overall volume was giving him a lot of trouble, just the fact that he wasn't really intimidated by Yafai's power and physicality. Um, you know, he was still coming forward. I mean, kind of walking through a lot of uh, Yafai's punches. Yafai wasn't really able to bully him, you know, kind of lean on him, muscle him around, wrestle him the way he was against Concepcion. And, um, you know, like I said, I, th- I thought he got, you know, stunned uh, uh, on a few different occasions, uh, you know, momentarily, but still. I mean, just doesn't, it's not a, uh, that great of a look when it's coming from Murdenaku, who isn't really a big puncher. You know, he's, he's, he's a bit of a, just kinda, he just kind of throws and throws, more of a volume guy. Um, I mean, if I did, did well. He definitely won the fight. He won the fight uh, fairly, fairly clearly. Uh, but I think uh, that Mononaka, like I said before, just he made he made him have to really work for a lot of those rounds. It wasn't just like if I was able to kind of cleanly outbox him or just completely beat him down. Um, I think that there was a lot of moments in there where Mononaka was was almost kind of drawing him into a bit of a Mariaga Valdez esque fight. He didn't quite get there, but there was there were some moments where you thought, oh man, this is about to pop off. And to you know, more like a fight of the year candidate type type deal. But if I kept that from happening, which is credit to him, um, but I think he's really like on the second tier of uh, super flyweights. He's not on that you know a Roman Gonzalez quadra Cesar Kett level. I, I think he's just below that, along with like uh, Joanna Cos. Yeah, no, it was a fight where it started off well for me, but it kind of lost a bit of uh, lost a bit of. Energy um, second half. I know there there were parts times where Carl Yafai was catching Muranaka pretty flush, and I don't know that dude's even really tough. Or Carl doesn't punch that hard because he took a lot of shots, man, and he didn't. He wasn't really phased, man. He, he kept coming yeah. through. But the second half was a bit flat for me, and the, the crowd kind of echoed that because initially the the atmosphere was pretty good, but they did quiet down, and Yafai started really well. Then. Comparing him to his brother Gamal, like Gamal's very upright, very um, not much head movement. But I always think Cal flows from offense to defense really well, and he does it with head movement. He does it with uh, footwork, and when he's on the inside, like he's he's okay. But like that's where like you're saying about like a bit of a firefight was breaking out, where Muranaka was having success on the inside, and like fifth, sixth, seventh, and it looked like. Cal really slowed down a bit and like, he wasn't using the head movement he wasn't um, using the footwork he was just kind of standing there using his shoulder to protect his hit one side and you know trying to hit him off with the right hand and um, it was an okay fight and I was kind of disappointed because the way you described uh, Muranaka beforehand nailed and it's really partly my own fault because I maybe should have done some reaches I thought it might have been a bit easier for Yafai I thought this is going to be like a kind of easiest defence Eddie's going to bring over a guy who's 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 not going to cause your fire any issues? So, um, yeah, I thought your fire would have done a bit better in this fight. I'm going to say something the same about Eggington as well when we get to that. And yeah, it, it was a tough night for most of the the the, the hometown Birmingham boxers. I thought um, initially, I thought matchmaking was quite favourable to them, but the way the yeah. fights went, yeah, it was it was it was it was pretty tough for all those dudes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had said it last week. Uh, I felt like Mononaka, especially in his last fight, he fought a guy with a, a somewhat similar style to to Yafai. 
And, you know, he barely won that fight to me. So just I, I felt like if I would be able to kind of um, institute his style a bit more effectively than he did. Uh, it, seemed, it just seemed like uh, the difference was in the physicality of Murnock. I didn't know that he was that rugged and had, you know, that good of stamina in terms of being able to take shots and kind of come back and recover quickly and, you know, just keep on throwing at your fight. And I think that that's primarily what um, gave your fight a lot of issues. Basically, like... In the past, when he's hit guys with those same shots, they've either kind of backed off, fallen down, or just kind of been put more in defensive mode. This guy was coming right back at him every single time. So it was it was a bit of a, a different situation for Yafai that he hasn't necessarily seen very much in the past. Yeah, and I don't want to sound negative because I'm a fan of Yafai and positive. Yeah, he's still, he's still a high-level guy. I mean, yeah. it's still going to take a very good fighter to beat him. Positives-wise, uh, you know, again, yeah. like I've said about the head movement and the footwork, but like the variety of the punches as well, the left hook to the body is really good, and he's, he's a fun guy to watch, man. And I, yeah. I do agree, though. Technique like, is really is really solid. Yeah, I, I do agree, though. Like That division is pretty pretty top-heavy, man, and I, I can see like Eddie avoiding any big names until he, he just wins, he wants to cash yeah. out and have a big fight, or someone decent becomes mandatory yeah well i don't know i mean he he's he he said that he was gonna that they'd get get him one more defense and then try to unify so i'm gonna hold him to that but wouldn't he get good on that i just think it's funny when you got you got this you're in a division with all these great fighters surely he could have a good career if he just fought all those guys i mean even if he lost a couple maybe won a couple He's still a solid fighter, and he would get reasonable money for any of those fights. He should be jumping at the chance to fight these guys. He should be. He should be so lucky to have a division full of great fighters. I, mean, I, he, I, yeah, I bet. I, mean, I, bet I bet Joshua wishes his fucking division would look yeah. like that. But, but time will tell. Them I mean, uh, I've seen it, like, especially you know, super flyweight, because the money isn't there as much as it is right now. Yeah, but they can generate their money over here if they're clever. And Eddie's as good as he says he is. He should be able to have enough money to get all of those guys to come here. Maybe not Roman. But most of the other guys, he should have be able to put his hand in his pocket and get them over here for him. It is cheap. I was thinking today, Leon, like, he sends Steven Smith over. Yeah, but Warren can bring Javante over. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah, but Warren, to be fair to Warren, Warren's always believed in home advantage. He has, yeah, that is true. Yeah, I mean, to his detriment in, and to fight his detriment in, in, at times. But stuck to his guns, he's never changed. Yeah. Yeah. And truthfully, I think um, Yafai actually has one of the – probably the uh, – of the rankings for the sanctioning bodies, I think the WBAs are probably the weakest right now. Because they have – not only is it just in terms of the level of fighters that they have, but even the, like the top-tier guys like that, that they have on there um, probably aren't going to be fighting for that title. You know, Estrada's really more uh, inclined for the WBC. He's, you know, he's pretty much got a guaranteed shot if he beats Quadras. Um, Zelani Tete can't make the weight anymore. And Takumi Inoue can't make that anymore either. So I mean, it's uh, he has he has a, a fairly I think um, easy road ahead of him in terms of just like optional or mandatory defenses until um, he fights like a unifier or something. But to Neil to the point, yeah, I, I want to give Cal um, a chance to you know have another defense and then see if he does fight someone because he did like put a comment out and uh, interview on boxing. He wanted interview, but yeah, he he did make a statement where he said you know. He, he wants to fight Choco in the States or something like that. So, yeah, let, let's let's see, let's see, give him a year and see how it goes. Good, I hope that he should want to fight these good guys. Like I said, like, boxers should be over the moon that a division's good. Not finding ways to avoid people. Definitely. All yeah. right, let's move on to the fight that you did see. Our boy, Sam Eggington. Leon? You broke up a bit then, Cam. Yeah, Leon, let's move on to Eggington then. Your thoughts? Well, typical kind of Eggington performance, wasn't it? You know, get punched in the face for four rounds and then slowly wear the guy down. <laughs> and I love Sam. Like, I really like Sam. I think he's a great story and he's a fun fighter. And he's getting better and better, but it's kind of the truth. And that guy, you knew Sam. Didn't you feel like after about two or three rounds, oh, Sam will get to this guy in the end? I, I knew it, but... I. I thought it would happen faster because when I did my research on uh, Seferino Rodriguez last week, I thought this guy's going to get starched by like the sixth or something like that. But there were times where he was like causing some issues and I'm thinking, well, if this dude's causing the issues like, and, and, and afterwards like Barry's calling out like Danny Garcia, it's like, do you want your boy to get brain damage or some shit, man? 
Uh, I mean, yeah, exactly. We'll come to back. I mean, Barry is a very weird, weird man. Like, I mean, if he was any younger, Sam, you'd be worried, wouldn't you? That'd be like grooming kind of fucking things going on. I mean, he's a <laughs> fucking dodgy old pervert, if you ask me. But that's just my take. But anyway, yeah, Sam, he's he's fun. He's a fun fighter, and like, and he should beat that guy. But I mean, what can he do? I mean, fighting Danny is just. I mean, for all of Danny's flaws, I mean, he better, he's going to have to have a monster chin to get through any of those kind of fights. I, he has got a good chin, but I don't know, like, I can see he's, like, surviving some of Danny's punches, but, like, why would you want to do that to the young kid, man? Uh... He should be looking to try and get the skeet fight again. He should get himself nah. a couple more good British guys, or Euro level, or kind of fringe world level. Leon, skeet's just the, like, skeet would beat him, like, 99 times out of 100. That's just a style matchup that just wouldn't Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm true. But he sh- should he still not want that? Like, he should want to go and try and revenge that and go, right, my plan is, Eddie, I want to get a few more fights under my belt, but in a- 18 months, I want to fight him again. Now I need to fight people to give me the same problems that he's going to so we can try and get that, you know, get that victory back, and all that those loss people, back. And all those people with that style would probably end up beating him. <laughs> but we don't know, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Cam, no, I do. But, you yeah. know, that's what, that's what I'd want him to do. Yeah. Because that's no. the best, That that's the the most, you know, Logical. He's, got, he's got some chance yeah, in that get, fight. Get your demons out of the way again. But um, exactly. just quickly on some positives, that knockout was awesome. Oh, he took some couple of those shots you catch when you're going down are pretty brutal, aren't they? Yeah, and that uppercut hook, man. Oof. Beautiful. Oh. Yeah, I mean he's got he's got he's got a style to give people issues, you know. Uh, he he has got that wear you down and just kind of ground you into the dirt style as well, man. Is that it is a, he is a bit of a throwback boxer, you know, like back oh, in the day, definitely. like black and white, and you just see the guy just keep coming forward, taking shots, but then giving more shots back and eventually taking the guy out. That's what, but they've got to be careful with him. He's 23. He's taking all those shots already. They've got to manage his career properly because you don't want him to be taking this this kind of beating for the next 10 years, do That's you? That's the issue about having a good chin. You just rely on it so much where you start stuttering the next minute, like you're slurring your words and you've fucking got too much damage, but it's too late. But they've got time to make it. I'm not saying he can de- make improvements, but they've got a young guy who's obviously willing to put in all the work. That, that seems like he always turns up in fantastic shape. Like, they've got the time for a young fighter to try and actually improve him. It sounds stupid, but and I know he's young, but I don't... I, I think that's his style. He's going to be like that if he continues to fight until he's 35. That's just his style. I don't think you're never going to change him that. Fine. No, but you can try and make him a little... Have a little bit more head movement. Finesse like, you can that. work on those things. Finesse some things. Cause, so why throw him to the wolves against Danny now when you could improve him in the next three years? And he'd only be 26 then. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. That's just fair. throwing him to the wolves, but at this age, it's just that's just a you know if that's what he wants to get. The, if he said to the Hearns, "I want get me the biggest fight as quickly as possible, and then I'm gonna fuck off out of the sport," I've no you know that's fine, do it. But if he wants to actually try and do something, there was no need to rush him. Yeah, Neil, so you, did you catch this fight? No, I didn't. Unfortunately, did either of you see the Gamalia fight fight? No, no, how do you look? He looked good, man. Um, as I kind of previewed it when I was talking about Carl, that he, he is a bit straight up. There's zero head and upper body movement, and he does that thing where he just, if if the guy's unloading shots, he just stands there, absorbs, he doesn't try and step to the side or step back. Like I'm not a fan of like going back in straight lines. But... I noticed he was pretty scuffed up when they were interviewing him during uh, Cal's fight. <laughs> yeah, he was catching like just like unnecessary shots. and I, I don't like guys going back in straight lines, but I'd prefer that than you just kind of absorbing shots because even if you catch it on the glove, like if you catch a straight punch on the glove and it hits your head, it still hurts at times, man. So just step back, let the guy just, you know, fall short and then uppercut or hook or whatever but to the fight itself man this uh, his opponent he he showed so much heart man like even when he was getting hurt to the body which he did numerous times because there was countless knockdowns in this fight and there there was one as well when he got hit to the head but majority it was uh, yeah gamal just putting in the body work and 
his opponent, I'm just trying to get his name, uh, Gamal, uh, Sean Davis, he was, he was firing back, like, even if he got a flush shot, he'd fly back with combinations, um, he, he just put so much effort into it, he just didn't have, um, the punch resistance, especially to the body, you know, if he did, like, well, just it would have, it would have been a war, but for, as long as it lasted, it was a pretty good fight, and, um, I like Gamal, he, he puts everything into, um, his shots, he, he never throws it like a, a shot without putting full energy and full fucking force into it. And I, I would like him to maybe take a, take a few pages out of his brother's book and just work a bit of head movement, working a bit of footwork because he's quite flat footed. And um, but maybe that's just his style and that's the way he's going to be. But he, I, like we're talking about Eggington finessing himself, I, I definitely think uh, Gamal, he's still young as well, he can definitely finesse a few, few things. And he's definitely a problem in that weight division as well. And there's some good fights to be made up there. Let's, uh, let's see if Eddie actually does something like that. Like, I know Warren. One thing I rate him about him, he he doesn't got put guys into other directions. He like if Hearn had Williams and had Smith, they they wouldn't have had they wouldn't fight. They wouldn't have had that fight that we had a couple of weeks ago. Where Warren, he knows about trade fights. He knows like these are the fights that the people want. So let's uh, hope Hearn does you know match up maybe some of his guys together because uh, I think Gamal and like maybe Quig and all the featherweights that he's got would would match up quite well. So. That's about it for that fight. What else was the... Uh, Frankie Gavin. Frankie can't make the work. Wait, Gavin. Did you guys watch this fight? I don't think he did, to be honest. No, no I, I'm with I'm with Chemo, man. We don't talk about that guy anymore, man. He's a, he's a <laughs> fucking mess. He is a waste, man, but I don't know. A lot of people on Twitter were saying that like, Garrido won it. I don't know. Like He won the first two rounds and maybe one of the later ones, but... I think when Gavin got in his flow and like the left uppercut was working well, the the right hook and spinning off um, was decent. He he did get in his flow and Garrido was looking kind of basic and um, I thought he won quite comfortably. I don't know if the people were just kind of trolling him on on, on Twitter because you know it was consistently missing weight and I don't know. It's very unprofessional, but we've said it time and time again. And how are we going to try and get to 140? It's just ridiculous and. It was funny, Matt Macklin put a tweet out afterwards, like, really good win for, 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 for my friend Frankie. And it's like, no, it's not. One, one of all, you missed the weight multiple times. Second of all, it's an eight-rounder. And third, like, he dropped rounds against this guy. Someone that talented should won 8 no. Like, that's how talented he is, but it's just, it's a waste, man. It's, he's, he's a waste of really good talent. Uh, Josh Kelly, you guys didn't see either of this, I guess. Nah. Uh, Josh, we've seen him make his debut on the, I think it was the Indongo Burns card in Scotland, and from the eye test, he looks good, man, but he's just one of these guys that kind of, he does more head movement than he throws punches at times, it's like he's he's, he's just, he's trying to look too slick for his own good, but he's, he's obviously he's very early yet, and um, from when he's going forward offensively, the way he punches, uh, puts punches together, man, there's, uh, he, he looks pretty good, he's, he's he, he is the type of classic um, Adam Booth fighter, so um, he's definitely got a good trainer behind him, and his opponent did look like a a crack. Well, yeah, a, a drugged up version of Martin Murray. Leon, if you if you're free, just just look at his uh, opponent's picture, Johnny Vina, man. I think he was a Spanish dude, but he did look like a a Martin Murray that's like been on drugs for a couple of years. Johnny, what was it? Vina, J O N Y, Johnny. Uh, Vina, yeah. V I N A. Maybe I'm just looking at his box rack. His box rack doesn't look that much like him, but if he, on the fight night he did look like a drugged up Martin Murray. So um, yeah, that's about it. Josh Kelly, he got the stoppage. I thought it was a bit premature. He was taking flush shots, but I don't think Josh Kelly's that heavy-handed because even in the fight in uh, Scotland against uh, Jay Byrne, he um, he was he was looked pretty tough himself. Like he, I don't think I don't think Josh has uh, got the power. But um, time will tell. Uh, what else have we got? I think that's about it. There was, I think, a floater in there, but that's mainly the the Birmingham card covered, Leon. So, yep. people are waiting on this great news, the fight that was announced today, Leon. They want your positive reaction on Tyrone Huge versus Paul Smith Jr.? 
off. It's difficult to even get upset or angry by this guy now. I mean, he's just... No, it is, actually. He is the most fucking privileged fighter walking the planet. What does he have fucking have on Eddie Hearn? He's got pictures of him with goats or something, because how the fuck has this guy got so many opportunities? It's unbelievable. And he... Do you think that's what was on Vlad's USB stick? That could be on Vlad's USB stick. I mean, look, what do you think you need to have done to earn any kind of title shot? Like, you just lost a title. What's the minimum you would expect that fighter to do to get their next world title shot, Cam? Just like, just hyper, you know, just and Boxer X loses in a world title fight. What does Boxer X need to have done to get his next title shot? At least, like, fight a couple decent guys or fight a 10-rounder, maybe a 12-round eliminator, something where you're going to earn it. But what earning isn't a word used in boxing these days. Yeah, so would fighting three six-rounders where you've been three pounds over the the weight you're going to fight your world title at, like, would that be what you would expect from a world title challenger? No. No, that is fucking... I mean, it's unbelievable. How do you get an opportunity like this? Look at his box rec. Everyone, uh, take a look at what he's done in in 2016. It's the fights he's had in 2016. It's a fucking disgrace that he's anywhere near... He's, this guy is not fucking... He's only just good enough to hold on to a fucking British belt. It's crazy, man. And you've... Uh, it's just... It's embarrassing. I mean, and this the guy he's fighting should be fucking embarrassed. The Germans who made this fight shouldn't be fucking... They're happy because they think... They all think Paul Smith's a bum. That's why they've made this fight. Not because they think, oh, this is a really good challenge for our fighter and a really... Oh, it's a fucking fantastic name to have on his record. They've picked it because he's easy to beat and the, and he's on Sky. It's, it's terrible, though, man. It's... When they kind of when they started floating about a couple of weeks ago and then it went all quiet, we thought, oh, the, at least the WBA are not going to sanction this shit. And then this weekend, I think during the fight, uh, well, during the f- boxing was on uh, on Saturday night, like some German, uh, I think, sports analyst put a tweet out and fucking Twitter almost broke because it's ridiculous. This dude, man, he, he fucking does a bit of commentary now and again. Fights in six rounders now and again, like you said, at weights where it's not even at the weight that he's going to be fighting this title for. He was ridiculously overweight for the Andre Ward fight. I like Hamada did have him winning the first Abraham fight, to be fair, but um, I don't know that that was a very close fight. The second one he convincingly lost, and I remember he used to uh, when I think Rocky Fielding was kind of mandatory for the British title when he had it and I think Rocky missed weight for a fight and he was criticising and saying it's unprofessional and this and that and it's like you know, it's, that's the story of your life these days it's crazy man look let, this is the cold hard reality of what we'd, who we're dealing with here we're dealing with a man who has not made weight not made the weight at 168 since the 2nd of February, yeah, 21st of February 2015 is when he last fought at his, at the championship weight that he's going to be fighting his belt for. Over two years. Crazy. How, how is, what, what's happening here? And the worst thing is, that fucking guy in Germany, he might not be good enough to fucking hold off what might happen. When the world fucking falls in on itself. No, but barely you beat it. Hey, I barely survived that, Leon. If Paul Smith thinks beating Tyron Zuge for this bullshit belt makes him a world champion, then I think I might have to quit the coalition. If if he thinks, or if he's going to have a belt around his shoulder or his waist, then I don't think I can handle it anymore, Leon. But let's be, I mean, I, we, I've seen Zuge a bit because I think we've seen him with on a few cards I've seen him but like when they had that shabby kind of Sowland Sky hookup he and should beat him to be honest it, like, he, he should beat him okay. but he, yeah, he, he's, he's he, not if he loses then I don't know Coalition's gonna retire 
Oh, yeah, I mean, let, let me just have a look at what he's done in his career. Well, he hasn't got enough knockouts for my liking because we all like to see, you know, Paul Smith get, get um, George Grove again. So, but he's fought no one either. No, he's had those. those he's fought fights. fucking no one. Oh, his his record might be as bad. Yeah, at least that... he's made weight. Yeah, he's made weight. <laughs> That's a positive. <laughs> Oh my god, this this is appalling, this fucking resume. But it's in Germany, don't it? So hopefully that we'll have some poor judging if it does go the distance. Oh. Fingers crossed. Neota, do you want to shit on Paul Smith or should we move on? Nah, go, go ahead and move on, man. I don't have much to say about it. I haven't really got any other news. Um, I wasn't paying attention to the boxing scene this week, unless you guys want to talk. I know Neota, you were saying before the show you want to talk about the Canelo Chavez pay per view figures. Um, yeah, I mean, so supposedly, I guess they did it over a million, which is really solid. You know, it shows that uh, the pay-per-view model, at least for certain fighters, certain fights, I guess, um, you know, it's still it's still lively. I think really Alvarez and Anthony Joshua are like the two the two guys that can still kind of handle it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that anybody else could, should, or would. Uh, but, you know, that's pretty solid. And I, I imagine that him versus Golovkin is going to do uh, pretty damn well, considering all that. Um, even though the, a lot of people are really soured off of what happened between Alvarez and Chavez, and especially you know if they if they um, stack the undercard uh, a bit better too for um, Alvarez and Golovkin, I think it'll it'll be a, a good one. You know, I think um, a lot of people will definitely uh, buy into it. Just uh, you know, it's a lot more. It's the most competitive fight probably that um, Alvarez has had since Mayweather, really. And um, and for Golovkin, I guess you can kind of say the same outside of the Jacobs fight, you know, for the last uh, couple of years in terms of um, an opponent really being live and um, coming with the mentality of winning. So, um, I, you know, I think it'll be pretty good. Now to three things. One, I feel bad for all the Mexican public that bought that pay-per-view. Yeah, it's 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 really a I mean, part of it is a lot of people's own fault though, just because of the fact that I mean, when you decide to like uh, to put all your hopes on one fighter and be a casual bitch and you know not pay attention to the multitude of like world class level Mexican champions, world champions, um, on the stage, you know, it's kind of your own fault. You know, if you're not paying attention to the Estradas and the Ganaga Lopez's of the world, um, you know, it's your own fault. It's your own fault for missing uh missing out on the forest for the trees. Uh, secondly. I um, disagree with you. I don't think they'll put a good undercard on. I think they know how good the main event is, and I think the undercard just will be trash. You think it'll be? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I'd imagine it'll at least be the level of uh, the Alvarez Chavez undercard. Well, I mean, which wasn't particularly great, uh, but I mean, there was at least um, there was at least a little Some bit names. to watch there in terms of Matisse yeah. and and uh, Lemieux. You know, to yeah, I, I bet you, I bet you those. Okay, fight. I bet you Lemieux and Matisse on the card. Are on that card. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, same possibly. Thing. Yeah. Maybe even JoJo as well. I don't know. <laughs> well, hope. I, I mean, still trying to build him up to HBO level. What would be? I mean, you would think at some point they might have thought, let's put Billy Joe on there, but Billy Joe's got his own issues coming up. Yeah. But Lemieux, Lemieux versus might... a fringe guy should be good. Yeah, I was hoping that they might have Inoue on there if, um, because they're talking about him making his debut in in this fall, so. Uh, it'd be nice to see him on there, uh, but I'm not sure if uh, they could make that happen, considering it's more of like a K2 Golden Boy thing, and he's not clued in with either. Yeah, be pretty and they've good. got so, they've got issues getting opponents for Lucas, haven't they? I think. I think if you pay the right person enough money, I don't think they'll have issues. But I think they just try and look for the right path for him, I guess. Because and them. there's enough money in this fight. <laughs> There is, but um, yeah, it'd be interesting if Billy Joe is on this. I know he's got Kurt Sidious in, uh, is it July? But um, if he is on this uh, undercard, I, I can't see it though. It's, it's a bit be a quick turn nah, around nah, for his lazy I guys, don't think so. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I doubt it. The other thing I was going to mention about this card, Nailter, is this room is kind of like where it's going to land, if it's going to land in a baseball stadium in LA, if it's going to... I've, I've read like, obviously... Grain of salt with Dubai, but I've read Qatar as well. Like, do you think it'll just be nonsense and it'll just be in Vegas as always? Um, I, I don't think there's any chance it ends up in the Middle East. Uh, I think, you know, the the outside of the U.S., the only place I could even like for uh, uh, an ounce of a second, um, to like a uh, a minutia of a second, uh, consider it being held. Maybe maybe like if they were to have it like at 
at Wembley or something like that. But even then, um, I don't even see it happening at Dallas. I think Jerry Jones just likes to big up himself and get him get his name in all the papers. So the fuck out of here with all that Texas shit. And um, I don't even necessarily see it happening in L.A. If it, if it was to happen in the stadium, I'd imagine um, having it at you know in one of the big L.A. stadiums could you know potentially be a bone. Um, simply because people will will pay a little bit uh, higher in, in price for it, um, for the tickets and such, um, whether it's at StubHub or wherever else. Um, but I, I'd imagine it just makes too much mo- sense, makes too much money in Vegas, because when you consider all the revenue that gets brought in from gamblers, high rollers, uh, from all across the world even, um, you know, especially with you know Golovkin being being fairly big in amongst like Germany and some of like the the Central Asian sect sector um you know i think that you know there's there's definitely some money out there um for the casinos uh, you know get some kickback action going on the way that a lot of uh the Floyd Mayweather's and many Pacquiao's fights had in the past so but, I, to me it just makes way too much sense for it to happen in Vegas that's an interesting point because I, I forget Golovkin does bring although he he's the b-side he definitely does bring that foreign market to that um deal doesn't he he that does. Outside of, of the that US, world, like Golovkin is the A side. Outside yeah, of the US, he's the A side yeah. all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, I mean, that's and, and that's Mexico. mega bucks. They're making. I forgot about that. They're making some serious money on that foreign TV, aren't they? I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say so. You know, with, with, K, with, K, with K2's connection, with K2's connection in Germany and all that good stuff, you know, in Russian TV, Kazakh TV, etc. I think uh, yeah. over, over here there's, there's or Europe, Europe. Um, Aust- yeah, yeah, China. Make, I mean, every, China, China, you know, messes with Golovkin, Japan, etc. You know, I think he's, everyone's he's getting big, rich, like, aren't they? Yeah, Eastern Europe and Asia. Everyone's like, getting he's, rich. He's 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 bringing people in. What do you think, Leon? A lot of talk for a couple of months, and it'll just be in Vegas. Yeah. I don't, I, I mean, you'd want it, I mean, has Golovkin fought in Vegas? Um, maybe, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't think he has. If I was him, I'd want to fight in Vegas. I actually just I mean, think... I don't, I, I don't like the town, but I mean, you'd want, if you're a boxer, you'd want to fight there. I actually think the way the world, the boxing world has reacted with the Joshua Klitschko fight there, I think maybe they would really deeply consider having something like a stadium, but... In Texas, to go for the one up and get the get the hundred. Yeah, I could, I could see, you know, I could see trying to put for, for the biggest fight in boxing, put on a stadium fight. But Neota does make a valid point about the revenue, you know, bringing the high ballers and and I, I would like it to be in a stadium, but I think it will end up being in Vegas eventually when they actually stop messed about and decided where they yeah. operate. I think that's a big part of the reason why we really don't have stadium fights in the US is Las Vegas. It's just too much revenue. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's, he, Glufkin's not fought in Vegas, uh, Leon. All right, you guys got anything else you want to talk about? Um, no, nah, no. Nah, let's 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 get on to the to this week. There's a lot to preview. Packed, packed, the packed weekend, man. Shit, man. I don't. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to watch everything next week. I think we might have to do the 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 preview uh, the review show on like Wednesday or <laughs> All right, where do you want to start, Leon? I guess to the one that we're gonna go meet up at. Yeah, I think that's the. Uh, well, I don't know what to say. I mean, there's so many great fights this weekend, but I think it's really interesting. I think it's Co- really interesting. Coalition meetup, yeah. Coalition meetup. Yeah, you know exactly. But you know, find us on Patreon. You know, just <laughs> hook us up with that cash, and you get to meet great. You know, some some great uh, C side, F side level fighters. Yeah, we'll have we have in there photo. <laughs> You have to pay 50, 50 pounds for a photo with Leon. Also, we have him merchandise. We'll have some salt bottles that he'll be signing and giving out to the crowd. So. <laughs> oh no! But I think it's the most interesting. Don't you think it's really interesting that he's come over to the UK for this fight? That, that was the I main reason really I wanted to go. I think it's brilliant. I think, yeah, I think it's awesome, man. Like for a young dude to be so confident on his first defense to come over here, it's amazing, man. Like I've said in the past, like world champions used to tour the world before and. Um, yeah, you're but, a world champion. Yeah, you know, and, and now everywhere. they just sit in their hometown or their home country and just you know don't go anywhere. So it's really refreshing that Javante decided to do that. I know it's probably like people in his ear and saying this is the best bit, but it's still him, I guess, who ultimately decides where he's going to fight and what he's going to do. So really refreshing. And to be fair, it's not an easy. It's not. I know the Americans have, might not see much of Walsh, but it's not what I'd call an easy. Give me defense. 
You know, he's a good boxer. I don't know, man. Like, I think... I think he'll get beat, but I don't think he's going to go... He's going to pussy out at any point. No, no, no. I think yeah. he's... he's, he's, he's and he's gonna... got skills, Cam. He's got skills. Yeah, um, no, he does. I mean, uh, a lot of people, they, they forget about Andre Klimov, a guy that, I mean, Crawford uh, outboxed on his way to a 12 round decision. I mean, Walsh didn't do much different than what Crawford did against the same guy. So, I mean, if you're just talking about, like, level of... of um, opponent and such you know I don't, I don't think walsh is necessarily that far behind davis no um, he's schooled if, him, if at all if at all if at all um you know i think uh, davis if anything it's more about his physicality um that that could and probably would in my opinion win this fight for him but i don't think walsh is completely uh, in over no, his but, head but walsh isn't some stumbling come forward european fighter either you know he's a i, I think they're both boxer punches wouldn't you say yeah. He's not a brawler. He's not an out and out brawler, is he? Um, no, no. He kind of. No, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he's, him, so. I think maybe some people they say that just because they kind of see the high guard and they see him just you know coming forward. But I mean, he utilizes it in a boxing manner where he's he's, he's got he's good movement. Good, good movement. Head. Yeah. And he's, a, he's the one thing he's got going for him is he's got a bit of height on him, a bit of height, and I think a little bit of reach if but if if everything's right. So if he can use that, he might he might. He could win some early rounds, but I think, you know, this kid looks like he's a serious puncher. So, I mean, you know, let's see what that chin's made of. Because I don't know if we've really ever seen um, his, his chin tested, you know, Walsh's chin tested. And we don't know if he, if the bit of power that I think he does have, we don't know if it carries to a world class level yet. So there's a lot of questions about, there's more questions about Walsh than there is about Davis. Because we saw what Davis did to bizarre. P- 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 I can't pronounce that. Guy. Yeah, 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 that dude. So, you know, he's the he's the underdog in this fight, but I think it could be really fucking good fight. It's interesting because, you know, initially when the fight got announced, I was kind of hyped about it, looking at tickets, blah blah blah. And then, you know, when they kind of go into the camps and you kind of forget about it, it's just a date ahead of you, and you you're thinking about upcoming fights rather than that. And I, I went back and watched the Pedraza fight today, and. Shit, man, I had a smile on my fi- face, Leon. I forgot how good the fight was because I've not seen it since January. And like Javante, the southpaw, obviously left of uppercut right hand. Yeah. Beautiful. He's a little man. beast. He is, man. And the, the the problem is, is I watched the when I, I saw the fight initially, the claim of um, Walsh fight when it happened, and it was a bit of a boring fight. Like nailed us right. Like he won it quite easily, um, but. When I look at Walsh, he's one of those guys, and I say it quite often, where he, he's pretty good at everything, but there's not one thing where he excels at. And I, I actually think for the first few rounds, uh, he, he'll hang with Javante, but I think you'll just see levels. And I think uh, uh, Davis will just just take over and just kind of beat the shit out of him, to be honest. I, 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 I think, think he, he stops will. him late, like, eight on, yeah. like nine, ten. But I think all I'm saying is I think he's for Davis. This is more of a plus for Davis. So I think he's taking a. An, is it a mandatory? No. Yeah, mandatory. Yeah, it's mandatory. Yeah. Yeah, but he's taking. This is a good. He's come. He's gone away from home against a good fighter. So for your first defense, no one could have any complaints about f- from this young, from his side. You know, he's yeah. a young kid I mean, as I, well. I, I think he'll give a scrappy effort. I mean, uh, especially because Davis is the type of guy. You know, he has that kind of savage mentality. He's going in there, in there to really hurt you. You know, he's not. He's not. <laughs> A TMT fake Mayweather. Yeah, you know, he's he's going in there to do some damage to you, and I think Walsh will be, you know, he'll be game for it, um, at least for the er, the early goings. But yeah, it's, I'd say Davis takes him out late. But if Walsh managed to get through the fight all twelve rounds, and and gets beaten on the card, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets through it. I think he's good enough to get through it. Yeah, possibly. He does possibly. think he wins. Does think he wins? But I think he's yeah. strong enough to get through it. But I still think Davis knocks him out. But it's a good fight. That's all I'm saying. I'm give the kids some credit, you know. It's come around quite yeah. quick as well. Um, yeah. And yeah, should be a good night, Leon. Uh, undercards, so so. It started off pretty well, and like people started to drop off a bit. But it's okay. It's not. It's, it's not one of Warren's best undercards. But I guess it's it's, it's the main event that most people are worried. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's gonna get lost in the shuffle this week. Yeah. Yeah. but I the think isn't there that um like the. Tell yeah, you what, fight. there is on here. There's that Pigford fight versus Morgan, and they're both twelve and twelve wins, no losses. So that's a good. That could be a good fight, just because 
they both got reasonably good records. Now, I'll probably be on at like four o'clock before we get there. <laughs> no, I think that's quite high up. And then our boy, Boy Jones is back, isn't he? He's fighting a kind of journeyman guy. So that, you know, that's always good to see him. That's a reason. It's, it's okay. Yeah, Mitchell Smith's against the TBA at the moment. Uh, Chris Hobbs versus Anthony Yard might be pretty good. It's for a Southern Area title, but uh, Hobbs, yeah. is, H- H- Hobbs has uh, been like talking a bit, so um, that might be good. And Ryan Walsh, uh, Liam Walsh's brother's on there against Marco McCulloch, so it's okay on the What you What you say is there's a lot of reasonably matched fights. They're not great, but there's... that You say that Walsh, McCulloch, you look at their records, that's reasonably balanced. The next one down. Yeah, they're all like, there's no, until you get lowered down, there's no complete mismatches. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I got an email from the ticket company today saying, oh, just, uh, there's a change. The doors are now opening at four and the first fight's at half past four. It's like, no one's going to be there at half past four. <laughs> um, no, but well, I'll tell you who who's good is that there's that Archie Sharp kid, which I saw at that last um, York Hall fight. He's really good, Cam. So, I mean, he's against a journeyman, but... Yeah, the I mean, guy that looks like he's 12. He's a fun fighter. I think, yeah. yeah the, 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 there was one guy I was really impressed uh, at the the York Yeah, that's him. That went to. Was it Sharp? I can't remember. It might be, but yeah, he. if it is him, yeah, I was really impressed with him. And then there's that... Re, um, Richards is on there, who's a light heavy. He he looked decent. I think he was on that um, that card I went to as well. And, uh, yeah, he was. Sanjeev Sahota as well. He's always in a... Yeah. Like, a scrap where he's always uh, getting hit but hitting back so that should be quite fun but I don't know I think uh, what time do you think we'll probably get to the venue? Six-ish I just, I, I'm going to check with, I'm going to check what time Boy Jones is on and then like if that might be our first fight we see Oh, uh, da- Daniel Dubois on there as well Oh is he? Triple D Triple D and then there's that Sam, Sammy McNess who's a, he's a big West Ham fan so that that there should be quite a few lively um should, should be quite lively in their camp. Let's we'll see how it goes. All right, let's move on. Now to let's go overseas to to your home country, Crawford versus Felix Diaz. It's it's a fight that's gone under the radar a bit. Not well promoted. Eh? Yeah, yeah, it definitely has. Um, you know, which is kind of unfortunate because uh, Diaz, if he's in shape, I think provides Crawford with the toughest test that Crawford's ever had. Um, you know, a, a good, uh, an in shape, sharp Diaz is as a hell of a fighter. I mean, he, frankly, I thought he beat Peterson. You know, he's defeated Adrian Granados in the past. Um, you know, he's he's. <laughs> it's kind of funny because for a guy that won Olympic gold. Um, he hasn't necessarily had a, a, a very much um, hyper uh, backing uh, for himself, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, that said, I mean, I think I think Crawford, you know, he's he, I think he's he's really on that level a fighter as like a special fighter. And even though I think Diaz is extremely good, um, I think he absolutely has to be at his best. And I don't think he's necessarily gonna be. I don't think he's gonna be able to make the weight um, optimally. Uh, make 140 optimally and you know if that's if he makes the weight at all um and i think crawford can beat him but i think diaz at the very least will provide um uh, definitely a stern test i mean especially considering some of the trouble that crawford's had with guys that are able to kind of close distance on him you know really quickly diaz is able to do that he's able to do that with power he's able to do that with just physicality you know uh, strength pushing you back and uh, you know, I think I think it's a very interesting fight, regardless of how it goes. You know, even if uh, Diaz isn't completely in 100% shape, I think uh, I think Diaz could. You know, he could he could give uh, Crawford some dangerous, scary moments in there. Yeah, I actually forgot this is at 40, and he hasn't made 40 for a couple of years, and yeah, that's put some doubt into my mind now because initially I thought he might he might win a couple early rounds because Crawford does usually start. Um, I think he still can quite slow. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'm a fan of Diaz, man. I, I like his style. He, he's a lot better going backwards. And Crawford's clever, though. Like sometimes the guys that are good going backwards, he'll he, he'll go backwards and make them come to him. And he, yeah. he, he's I think okay. he's really good forwards, though. Too. I mean, to be fair, I, I thought he beat the crap out of Sammy Vasquez coming forwards. He, he is good, but he kind of squares himself up. Um, uh, he he um, he's a bit easy to hit when he's on the front foot. Um, I don't know. He was good in the Vasquez fight, but coming forward against Peterson, I don't, I, 
he had a lot more success against Peterson on the back foot. Like he'd kind of like throw that right hook and then kind of step off to the side. He does this little spin off the yeah. front foot, which is quite good. And yeah, true. I mean, to to be fair though, I mean Peterson is a really solid inside fighter. I think that's like his game uh, all day. True. Well, how, well, what do you think? What What do you think Crawford's gonna do? Like majority of the fight, do you think he'll fight Southpaw, or do you think he'll come? It's just, uh, come out orthodox and stay orthodox or do you think he'll mix it I, you know I think I think he'll switch it up a little bit I think if anything southpaw would probably be um, a bit dangerous considering Diaz is a southpaw you know I think that might line him up a little bit too easily for the left hand the, the overhand left that, that Diaz will throw you know kind of hooks it over um, if anything you know I think he'll try to mix it up switch it up and uh, try to flummox Diaz with not necessarily using the same angles um, at any given time, but I think if anything, he'll he'll definitely be a bit more on the back foot, trying to make Diaz come forward and counter him. You know, he's got the he's got the height advantage, he's got the reach advantage, and I think that he's it'd be better for him to use that, especially because Diaz does lunge in a little bit. Um, you know, if he could catch him while he's kind of like lunging in up off of his feet, he could hurt him. Leon, what's your thoughts? I was just gonna say that that's the beauty of Crawford, though, isn't it? Over the years, he. Could... He's really developed from that fighter that we saw against Burns, you know, and he was very good that night. But now I feel like if you're his opponent, you don't know what he's going to do because he, he can he can pretty much use any tactic he wants and still have a chance of beating you. That That's how good I think he is. Tactically, I think he's very, very good. He, he can he can box you for a round and he can step in and he can get on your chest and then he can box you he can do whatever he likes really uh, he's such a good fighter I was going to ask what's Diaz like to the body because he smashed the shit out of Molina's body in that fight didn't he just slowly broke that yeah. body down he, yeah, yeah, yeah he, he did a really good job there I don't think Molina that, that, might that be, could be that the might end be of Molina Di- that might be a weak point for Diaz too if, especially if he's struggling to make weight you know that, that yeah. body tends to get tender when you're when you're starving I can see him if, if he's not in shape I think that's what Crawford will do Go for that body, but you know what I mean. He he can do. He can fight either way and and still win this fight. Go to the body. He's such a good fighter, isn't he? He really is. Uh, he I can't is. wait for him to go it's, to one four seven. It's a shame that like he's not as well, you know, known by people because skills wise, he's he's one of the best. But being over over there with Bob with no kind of live opponents, it's. Uh, yeah, that's that's the main problem. Is it's just um, he's in. At, when he was at lightweight, the division was a bit dead, and at 140, the division's been a bit shallow. You know, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily so, say dead, but shallow. Exactly. So he, I think at the end of it, he's done what he's had to do. He's got he's gone to, into both divisions, got to number one, where everyone clearly says he's number one. He yeah. should co- seriously consider moving up. Don't you Pop- think? I mean, is he going to look that small against those guys? The problem is, though, like, Bob's... Who's he got at 47 apart from, really, Pacquiao and, uh, and Bradley? And he, he's friends with Bradley, so I can't really see that fight happening. And, you know, Pacquiao's uh, thoughts on that fight? Well, yeah, you know, a, he's a, they he's need to reach across the aisle then, don't they? His situation is almost like a microcosm of boxing the last, like, several years in terms of, like, a lot of these older fighters that are the big names don't want to give up their torch to the young fighters so they don't even fight them it's not even about like oh i'm gonna beat all the young guys There's a lot a lot of them they're just avoiding um the the question entirely but it will probably hurt his pride but if he's willing to play b-side to some of these guys who are slightly more well established in the welterweight division he can beat a lot of these guys so if he's if he's willing to take the smaller slice and be the b-side he can get to the top by winning fights. Mar- I mean, even, I, people I mean, even, might think I'm even, going over the top. Marquez is always talking about... anyone a good fight there. Marquez is always talking about coming back one day, so maybe... <laughs> he would smash him to... Oh, he, I could only imagine uh, him being smashed to bits, really, but... Yeah, he'll get Hopkins. He'll yeah. Get Hopkins. Uh, do you think I'm being, going over the top to think that he could beat all, most of those guys at one four seven? At some point. No, no, I don't think that's over the top at all. I mean, I think he definitely has the ability to. If anything, I think he's still draining himself to make 140. He's, he's not a small guy. Um, what is he, 5'8", 5'9"? Five, 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 About 5'9", yeah. Maybe maybe a little bit of change on there. But, um, you know, but, yeah, I mean, I think he's, he has the strong, the strength, the physicality, um, the power, the, uh, the skills. You know, I, think, I definitely think he can hang at 147 whenever he decides to move up. 
Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if maybe he could fight some of like the B the B level roster of some of the Heyman guys. I mean, kind of like what, what he did with Molina. Molina was a Heyman guy because he was like uh, Heyman will allow his like some of his his non stars to kind of cross over and uh, and yeah, he might be able to, for the big bucks. You know, like Shot he might be able to pick off a Heyman guy. He might be able to pick off a Berto or something, mightn't he? Early, yeah, yeah. yeah. But look, I mean. I don't, you know, he, I th- he think he's the guy I look forward to seeing the most now. I know his resume isn't the strongest, but again, I don't think it's completely his fault because of the divisions he's been in. But people seem to be a bit critical of that last performance against John Bellino, like he didn't get him out very quick enough. He had a fucking number on him. It, you, he you, smashed well, and, him to and, and, bits. And you don't, you don't go in there trying to knock out John Bellino unless you want to get put to sleep. I, yeah. So <laughs> he did what he had to do and he smashed him up in that fight, didn't he? You know what's crazy yeah. about Crawford? He's not a guy where I'm bored and I'll go back and watch a Crawford fight, if that makes sense. Like, he hasn't got that about him. Like, I, oh, I, love... I watched that Molina fight a few times. See, like, I've only watched it once, and like, I don't know. He, oh. he, most of his fights... That are... finish is brutal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, I'm a big fan, but he hasn't got the X factor. Oh, he's... That's a shame, Kevin. He's got everything. I'm going to sound yeah, like I mean, a fanboy, but I think he's got everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so do I. So just, make it's, a, it's, make it's, a real, it's, you know, it's, it's been great fights lack, as well. It's just for the lack of uh, star, star level opponents is is all that's uh, that that's getting in his way of, uh, I think, breaking through a bit further. You know, and I think, uh, if anything, a lot of those guys are more so at welterweight than they are at uh, light welter. So. It's, it's all good. When he I, think the best, I think the best is yet to come for him. When he steps up, though, then he'll have the likes of Kel Brook, hopefully, or Frankie Gavin, or Sam Meng- Eggington Leon, so we can get some good <laughs> fights at 147. Well, <laughs> well, you'd hope, you know, that the Furmans and the Porters, you know, would want to fight him. And the, I mean, Danny's not going to want to fight him. That ain't never happening. I think we can probably all agree with that, but you know, he could fight Khan. Khan's kind of free agent ish, yeah. isn't he? The thing that the thing that I find most unfortunate is I think the most compelling fight would be him and Spence if if Spence beats Brooke. And, oh, um, yeah. And and the thing is I don't see Top Rank going anywhere near Spence. Not with any of their fighters. That yeah. That, that'd be a hell of a fight, though. Man. Yeah, but I mean, like, in just in terms of like how much sense it makes, it, 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 I think it makes the most sense just by virtue of they're like the the the, the guys looking to usurp. The, the big names of yesteryear. Yeah, but he's got to do it. I think now is the t- like now is just the time. He's twenty nine. He's in his prime. He hasn't got long enough. He can't hang around at one forty waiting for someone to come up to challenge him because there isn't enough. You know, that could be two years, couldn't it? He'd be thirty one then. He, he should. He's in his prime now. He should just go. Yeah. And just accept everything, and you know, obviously mm-hmm. negotiate, but accept those terms and take those names. Because there's some names there, and he could, you know. Nice. Yeah, man, go after it. Go after it. I think that's yeah. something that kind of Bradley missed out on, and uh, hopefully, hopefully Crawford uh, capitalizes on. Yeah, well, I'm glad they're friends. Cause I'd hate to see Bradley fed to the wolves like that. Because I think <laughs> the Bradley we've got now wouldn't stand much of a chance. Really. Yeah, man, Bradley. Bradley's a, a money fighter now. He's he's yeah. absolutely a prize fighter now. <laughs> you know, in the truest sense of that. But you know, so. are you telling he's me a, that he... like he's halfway out the door? He's a fighter. Look, are we all saying that he would beat Pacquiao? Crawford. I would, yeah, I think Crawford would. I think so. I think he easily yeah, beat Pacquiao. So. But you, do you think Pacquiao will give him issues and it would be a good fight? No, sure. I, I think it would yeah. bother him and I think he schools Pac. Yeah. Um, I still, you know, I still think, I wish Pacquiao would fall on that sword then. Pac doesn't want to give it up, man. He doesn't want to give it up. But uh, let's move on. Don't fall on your sword. Undercard wise, Neil, to a couple of weeks ago, you were saying Beltran's in a good scrap. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of, uh, watchability, I think it's a good fight. Um, you know, Marcelo is an action fighter <laughs> and I think he's going to go out on a shield and I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I think Beltran is too strong for him, just too strong, hits too hard for him. Um, I, who knows if he's still on the stuff, you know, that he, that he's tested positive for in the past. Um, so I, I mean, my, my cello, he, back when he kind of first, when I first saw him like on ESPN two Friday night fights and all that. Um, I was I was pretty impressed. I thought he was really good. He was almost like a mini Sergio Martinez. But um, once he got knocked out, oh, who was the guy that knocked out? Um, knocked him out. Nugaev, Rustam Nugaev. 
um, I realized that he doesn't really, he can't really handle pressure. And I think that if Beltran just kind of comes forward after him, um, high guards it, I think he can break Marcelo down and get another highlight reel KO. Um, you know, I think Marcelo will give him a, a good fight, and uh, it'll be a fun just action fight to watch because, you know, Beltran is definitely there to, to, to be hit a bit himself. But I think Beltran is just too too much for him, just in, in most regards. Uh, if anything, Marcelo's main advantage lies in his speed, but Beltran's timing is really solid as well. And uh, I think we're going to we're gonna see something, some knockout of the year type, type shit with regards to this fight. Is this um, HBO World? Championship boxing. What is I it? think it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Should be. Not there. What's the other one they do? The late boxing after dark. Yeah, it's not that. It'll be. Yeah. Because it's not much of an undercard beyond Beltran, is there? Just should cut Stevenson. Second. Yeah, yeah. Right? Just kind of like yeah, keep busy stuff going on. I guess building. There's a lot of prospects on there, isn't there? Yeah, you got Panamarov on there. You got uh, a couple of other Olympians. Yeah, you got Nazarov, the other gold medalist. Um, Teofimo Lopez. He's he's really active, actually. Lopez. He's already got. It's gonna be his fifth fight since the Olympics, which is impressive. Uh, not getting moved slow at all. But yeah, I mean, uh, you oh know, yeah, some, he was some, good. Some wasn't he? I like that kid. Yeah, yeah. The, he's from Honduras. He got robbed in in the Olympics uh, last year, but you know. Good, really good fighter though. He actually might uh, be a better pro than a lot of the other Olympians just because of his yeah. style. He has a pro style. And quickly, uh, Leon, Box Nation deliverance first. Again, obviously they've got the Davis fight, but then obviously they've got this um, in the early hours of the Sunday morning. So nice. I'll get the train home. Watch that. I think. What? what what's, what's the last train? From mine, from yeah. London, like half twelve. No, you, you, you're going to miss that. I can't miss that. I read Showtime. We're going to start at like six, so I guess the I, I guess the Davis fight's going to start at like quarter past eleven. Seriously, what time do they say you say they're starting? Their show starts at six Eastern, so that's like uh, eleven p.m. for us. Eleven? Ah, oh, she. Yeah, I better tell Ruffin. No, she's not. She's not going to let you go now. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um. All right, quickly moving on, I guess, unless you guys have got anything else regarding the top rank. No, 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 no. Where should we go to next, dude, Neil, to MGM National Harbour? Guy Russell versus Oscar uh, Escondon? Yeah, sure. Let's, uh, let's continue on with uh, with that. Um, I think this is a, a, a much liver fight than a lot of people expect. Um, I think Escondon is a bit of an under-the-radar guy, and I think he presents an extremely... Live chance to fight Gary Russell. I don't. I, honestly, I didn't. I didn't think Gary Russell really even fancied this fight, and that's a big part of the reason why it's taken so long to take place. Along with the fact that Escondon did um, injure himself a couple months ago, which resulted in, in this last pushback. But it's been pushed back about three different times. Um, you know, even though a lot of people might say that Gary Russell's been inactive, so has Oscar Escondon. He hasn't fought since uh, March of last year when he when he beat um, Robinson Castellanos to get this shot. And um, I mean, just looking back on that win, that was a big win. I mean, for him to have. Uh, KO'd Castellanos because Castellanos just basically ended Gamboa's um, possibly his career. Um, so, you know, I think he's he's extremely live in this fight against Gary Russell. To me, if Gary Russell doesn't catch him early with something big, he's in for a long night. And um, I think Escondon, his body work and just his overall um, strength and everything in there is going to be really troublesome for Russell. Um, and let, like I said, unless Russell is able to catch him and shock him with that early speed and uh, snap. You know, if anything, I could see it being not too dissimilar to um, uh, Rashi Warren's fight against uh, Zana Zakianov, because I think there's kind of a similar stylistic um, meshing with regards to, to that fight in this one. Leon, it's hard for me to give an opinion on this because I haven't seen that much of uh, Escondon. I think I've seen bits of the Flores fight and I might have seen bits of the... Um, the Tyson K fight a couple of years ago, but apart from that, yeah, I've not seen much. Of yeah, you. I don't think I've ever seen him, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> yeah. Really, the only thing I'm looking at is there seems to be quite a big, like he just seems like a smaller dude. Just looking at the pictures, than yeah, Russell. he is. He's he's only yeah. uh, five one and a half, so yeah. he's about as short. He's about as short as it gets. Um, yeah, but I mean, he's he's quick. He has uh, he has quick feet. He has pretty quick hands. He closes the distance really fast, and he has, uh, like I said, tremendous body work. So, um, you know, if he, it's it's really about closing the distance and uh, roughing Russell up. Nikki, what's his chin like? 
I'd say pretty damn solid. I mean, uh, him versus uh, Moises Flores was just a fight of the year um, candidate uh, back when it happened. It was on the Chavez, uh, was it the Funfara undercard, Chavez Funfara. And, um, the, the, I mean, he took a lot of shots from Flores, and he didn't really wobble. He get, he did get dropped by Castellanos last year, but like I said before, I don't think that's anything um, really awful. I mean, considering what Castellanos just did, uh, not only to Gamboa, but the fact that he upset several big names the last few years, um, Caballero, Ronnie Rios, Raquel Rez, etc. Um, so, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's pretty solid. It's really just a, like I said, it's a matter of if, um, if, Russell's able to catch him and just shock him with the speed early because I think that he can be vulnerable to that um, early on. He kind of he's one of these guys that he's like a, that Smoke and Joe Frazier esque fighter where it's like he needs to kind of get pumping, get get moving, and once he's a couple rounds in, you're in for just a hell of a fight against him. Okay, undercar wise, Andre Durrell's on there against uh, Jose Uzkatagi. Oh. Um, you seen him? I seen him. Initially, when he fought Julius Jackson, and he got that really good uh, stoppage in the second round, and I think he was in line to fight De Gale, and then I think it was a target got injured, and then it kind of got pushed back a bit, and then obviously De Gale had unifications, and then I think he got medical exception to um, to get it pushed back a bit again after his fight against um, his fight in January against uh, Badu Jack. So. Yeah, I think he's just trying to, you know, get out there again, get another pretty good um, um, win on his belt. And yeah, against Durrell, it's a pretty good fight, pretty good, um, pretty good preparation for De Gale if he eventually gets that fight. You know, another southpaw and similarish style. I know De Gale's quite uh, unique in his type of style, but um, yeah, should should be a pretty good fight, Nicky. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I, I don't think Darrell is as good as he was a few years back. I think he's he slipped enough that I mean, Uzkategi could hurt him. He could he he could potentially even you know stop him. You know, I, I think Darrell is has definitely looked a bit just I don't know just a, a bit not even necessarily just physically not not as good, but like mentally not as good either. Um, you, would you he's say- definitely looked he's looked a little brittle in his in his recent in the recent years. Um, Uzkategi, the thing is. I wasn't really impressed with him against Matt Karabov. I thought he really bottled that. Um, if anything, though, it, who knows? It might have he might have been drained to to make 160. You know, he's fought well well above that since that fight. Um, but uh, yeah, against Julius Jackson, he blew Jackson out of the fucking water. Um, so I think this is this is really a bit of a 50 50 type fight for it. I mean, for for the both of them. I mean, I think Darrell could potentially kind of out- outskill him, outslick him. But I think Uzkategi has enough uh, just boxing background, his overall level of ability and power, um, 22 knockouts and 26 wins. You know, can't can't really be denied. Uh, you know, I, I definitely think he has a, a strong shot here against Darrell. So, Nick, so Nicky, are you telling me that that one of the Darrell brothers is mentally weak? Nah, nah. Oh, shock horror! <laughs> Stop the presses. No, I was going to ask you about that Korobov thing because I was looking through his thing, like what happened there, but because he beat Paul he started, he started as well. Off well. He started off well, and it looked like he just gassed like nobody's business in the mid rounds, and Korobov just kind of uh, outboxed he, him the rest of the beat, way. He beat he beat Medina, didn't he? But as a while back. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't so quite funny, the same Medina it? as uh, yeah. as nowadays. But and that was actually yeah. a really good fight, though. If you go back and watch it, that was actually a pretty solid scrap between those two. It's on it's on uh, YouTube. You know, it's a funny-looking resume, that's that's all. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, I'd be interested to see what Darrell's got left. You know me, I love a Darrell. You do indeed. Anything else worth uh, talking about on this undercard? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the one. The Battle of the Burns, uh, Burns Apollo. <laughs> yeah. I guess you might call it one that beat him and one that beat him but didn't get the D. Didn't get the, the dub. Um, good fight. Um, I, I favor Bartholomew to win it. You know, if anything, just even looking at how they both beat Burns, uh, or both he didn't beat Burns. Burns. Bartholomew never beat Burns. No. Why was I saying that? He beat Mickey Bay, Dennis Shakatov, Demarco. Why was I thinking? Why was I thinking that he beat Burns? Anyway, fuck it. Uh, yeah, yeah. My bad. My bad. <laughs> I fucked up there. Shit um, happens. 
no, no, but just uh, looking at looking at the level of opposition though, um, with with how Bartholomew beat um, Denis Shafikov, uh, I, th- I think he I, th- I favor him here in this fight against Relic. I mean, Relic I think is, is very live. He's able to get on the inside. I think uh, Bar- Bartholomew can be a bit. Um, bit iffy on the inside uh you know he can be a bit open he likes to he likes to slug it out a bit on the inside a little bit too much for somebody that stands up quite as tall as he does and uh, kind of leaves his chin hanging out a little bit uh but i think i think really if he's able to kind of box to his optimal skill set he can outbox relic um he can't hurt him but relic can hurt him too i mean i think it's i think it's a, a fairly evenly matched fight um but but um, I, I favor Barthelemy like in a, in a 60-40 type fashion uh, to be Relic. But I, I don't really count Relic out. Um, I, if anything, I think he might just be a step behind Barthelemy in terms of uh, of getting the, getting the points. But I mean, if he's able to really hurt Barthelemy, which isn't out of the question, you know, Barthelemy has been hurt in the past. Um, you know, he, he could potentially get a knockout himself. I think it, it, this actually might be uh, might wind up being the show stealer of this particular card. Leon, what do you think? I could see Bartholomew outboxing him and frustrating him and Relic looking quite poor by the end of it. That's one narrative, I think, you know, because I think he strikes me as a kind of fighter that might kind of, um, if he doesn't get into the fight, he could quite, he quite easily just let a fight go, if you know what I mean. Like, he doesn't get any success early on. He might just follow him around a bit. But if he can drag him into something, you know, like he did to Burns, you know, it could be a really good fight. But I might be underestimating Reddick. Well, no, and I think he can. I think he can. I think Bartholomew, even a lot of times, he'll drag himself into it. You know, yeah, you're, I think right, he, you're right. I think, I think he fights a bit more offensively than, you know, the, a lot of people, what they kind of, kind of consider the Cuban style, really, like, stereotypically. Um, you know, he, he's, he's definitely going in there to, to, you know, do a bit of damage. Um, so I could, I could see uh, Relic, you know, definitely getting his shots. It's really about um, if he's able to capitalize on him and uh, if the accuracy is there. And where's this on in the States, Nikki? Showtime? Um, it, I'm not sure if it's on the main Showtime card, but I, I'd, I'd imagine it'll probably at the very least be on Showtime Extreme. Yeah, Leon, do you know if uh, Sky have picked this up or not? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure. No, I haven't, I haven't heard. That's a shame, man. Um, I haven't looked into it. Just quickly, my thoughts is Rancis Bartholomew for so many years he was kind of just safety first and he, he'd outbox you but he would never go that extra effort to kind of maybe stop you or hurt you or whatever but the last couple of fights he, he actually changed his tack a bit and he, he started to be a bit more offensive and put punches together and I'm interested to see which one we get on the night on Saturday and um, if, if it's the, the, the latter one and he's going to be aggressive in that I think uh, yeah um, Relic's going to be in for a tough night because um, he does hit relatively hard when he actually sits down on his punches and um, Relic, even though he did impress me against Burns, it was against Burns and, you know, I never rated Burns that highly so um, I think he might have uh, it looked better than he actually is against uh, Burns in that fight so I'm picking Barthelemy. Um I think he'll win quite convincingly as well. Yeah, I tend to agree with you on that. I could think, but you know, I think, like you said, Relic's got a chance. If you can drag him in, it could be really good. Yep. Um, okay, let's. Uh, I think that's the the three that we covered mostly. Next one is it Fox Sports One that I've got the Benavidez versus Porky fight, Nikki. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, PBC on Fox Sports One. Too much boxing, man. <laughs> I've yeah, got man. Fox Sport One now, Cam. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Wink, wink. <laughs> Working lovely, but, that. Um, th- th- this is a great fight, man, and a tough as hell fight. Like this is the, this is Medina is the type of fighter that normally, like, if if you're being really strategic about your matchmaking, you don't put a 20 year old hot prospect in against. I mean, like, he's the last fighter that you put him in against. But I mean, I guess um, they really you love Medina, don't you? You love him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a really good fighter. I I, I think he doesn't get enough credit for. Uh, how good of a fighter he is, really. And so, I mean, that's a, just the, the, the main reason I know, why, I know. if anything, I kind of overstate um, how good I think he is. I mean, I thought he he did every bit as much as Badu Jack did against the, the Gale, even though he didn't get the decision. I mean, but J- uh, Jack didn't either. So it is what it is. Um, but I think he's extremely dangerous for somebody like Benavidez. You know, Benavidez, he's, he's used to, I think, kind of being a bit more of like the on-top fighter, you know, the, the guy that's kind of being able to 
fairly easily handily beat his opponents down both in terms of skills and in terms of just being bigger stronger than him um here against medina i'm not sure if he really has that um i think he's he's going to be have to be a, a lot more careful a lot more cautious a lot more on his p's and q's against medina you know medina if he's on the inside um i definitely favor him to be winning the exchanges in a major way i think benavidez has to be a lot more uh finessed here um, I mean, he has a lot of power of his own, you know, 16 knockouts and 17 wins. So I, I think the the potential is there for him to hurt Medina, you know, especially if he's able to kind of counter him coming in almost in a sort of a fashion that I kind of talked about with Diaz and Crawford, you know, similar kind of height reach dynamic there. Um, but it's a really tough fight. I, I mean, you know, I, I can't even necessarily say I would favor Benavidez, even though normally when you can't come to these kinds of matchups, um, young prospect versus kind of former contender or former ch- title challenger usually the young prospect has everything in his cards like he's he's the one that's you know pretty um comfortably favored to win the fight but i can't even say that with benavidez if anything i actually might favor medina slightly just because i mean he's he's been on the higher level before he has more experience i mean he's just looked like an absolute savage recently um and benavidez you know he's he's only 20 you know he's 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 not he, he's not particularly uh, extremely – I mean, he's he's fought and sparred with a lot of top guys uh, the last several years, you know, in the wild card and et cetera. Um, but, I mean, getting there in an actual fight is a whole different story, and it's uh, it's extremely dangerous. Uh, you know, if he comes through this and wins it, I think that's probably the most impressive win for a, a prospect slash contender, a young guy, um, in the last several years. This is, this is tough matchmaking so early. Yeah. But uh, just quickly, Nikki, I don't – think I saw the fight with Dennis Douglin and did you catch that fight with Benavidez and Dennis Douglin? Yeah, I did. Um Douglin gave him a few issues in there. Uh, what, you know, the, what, there. What was Benavidez like towards the end of the fight, like gas tank wise? Um I thought he did pretty well. Um gas tank wise. If anything I thought he might have got a little bit winded probably in the maybe around the seventh, but he, he kind of um got the second run pretty quick and uh you know kept up the boxing, kept up the fighting on the inside and I mean he just broke Douglin down. My concern is he's very, um, he looks very stiff and like very tense, like he's burning energy away, just like standing in his stunts. So that's my only concern. Like if Porky can survive the early rounds and, you know, slip the, sh- the big punches, let him kind of just just throw bombs but miss them and tie himself out, then like I think Porky could definitely maybe like get to him late but i don't know if porky can uh, yeah. survive the early onslaught if he does get caught with flush shots because every yeah. time i've seen him so far I'll, like land man like guys are visibly hurt or dropped yeah. or knocked out so it's, i don't it's... know if you remember the fight between his brother jose benavidez and uh francisco chia santana i but think i did watch that fight yeah stylistically i think that this fight actually might wind up being really similar to that um, so you think, at a so higher you, level. So you think Porky will kind of work on the ropes and kind of look to counter? Because that, that, that's my concern about uh, his brother, where he'd always kind of go back to the ropes and like he wouldn't work enough. Or, or do you think yeah, he'll yeah. use his range? I think you meant David, because cause you said Porky. Um, oh, sorry. But yeah, I, I mean, I could see that, especially because Medina puts so much pressure on you. Um, but the thing is with, uh, with, with Benavidez, I think he really, if, if he wants to really, um, he, he needs to put Medina on notice with something. So I think he needs to try and get a little bit of uh, distance and leverage on his shots and, you know, uh, not linger on the ropes very much at all. You know, if anything, maybe if he gets a bit gassed or something, you know, yeah, uh, fight off the ropes a little bit, you know, he, he's competent in doing it. I think more competent than Jose is, um, but if anything, I think he really he needs to try and keep it a little bit more in the center of the ring. Try and uh, do the the stick and move sidestep routine, and um, just like get full leverage on the shots on uh, on Medina because you know Medina he's just a, a truck you know a little tank coming in there trying to just muscle you around. Liam, you got any thoughts? I don't think you've not if you've seen much of uh, David Leon. No, no, I haven't seen. That. Anything of David, pretty much. So I, I just know what Medina did to um, to Gale, and that was you know put him through hell. So yeah, it's a brave it's a brave step up for a young kid. I, I don't really know much, but I'm looking forward to it because you know we heard good things about Benavides. So yeah, I'm excited to see it. 
Yeah, he's a tall, rangy fighter. Fights a little bit in spurts, um, you know, which is like I said, you know, to to Medina's advantage. He reminds uh, me, but you know, he, he he can bang though. He, he reminds me a bit like Callum Smith, Leon, even though the Smiths are not very high in your <laughs> your um your list of favorite fighters. Yeah, but you know, Callum's got a certain skill set about him, hasn't he? So yeah. But I mean, I hope he's not as flat-footed as Callum. So he is a bit. Cause, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, because Porky will enjoy that because. You know, Porky's got good movement, you know, getting on the inside, so... Definitely. Um, should be interesting. Neoto, anything about Jorge Lara and Mario Briones? Um, well, you know, I've, I've sang Lara's praises in the past. You know, he uh, viciously destroyed Montiel last year. Um, and, you know, he's he's just a vicious fighter. That's just the type of fighter he is. Um, Briones is an... He's, he's kind of an okay guy. You know, I'm glad. He's really, to me, like an opponent to, to just kind of keep uh, Lara active. I mean, a pretty good like fringe-level contender-esque fighter at, at Featherweight. I think Lara's going to cut right through him, though. You know, I think Lara's just going to, you know, just chop him in half and, and show. And, you know, that actually may be bad for him because I think all, he's kind of avoided as it is, and that might, <laughs> that might make it even worse. But um, hopefully they get him more active. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully he he gets a little bit more of a name for himself. You know, he's he's exactly the type of fighter I was talking about earlier with regards to a lot of people not um, being so overly focused on Alvarez in terms of like you know top top uh, fighters from Mexico and such. You know, Lara is an absolute beast of a fighter. And he's he's uh, he's everything that you could want in in that type of a type of a fighter for that type of a fan. Um, he comes at you. He's coming full force. As soon as the opening bell rings, he has that kind of Tyson, James Kirkland nest to him. You know, he, he's trying to put his hands, he's trying to put his fists through you. He's trying to punch holes in you. So, you know, that's that's the type of fighter he is. And um, I'm always going to be interested in watching him fight because of that. Because if he isn't a, a, against an overmatched opponent, he's going to show you that his opponent is overmatched by getting getting them out of there. Just, you know, world starting them. All right, let's move on. Me and uh, Leon are going to go for a tea break, let you talk about the Japanese fighters. But now, now seriously, um, <laughs> on the Saturday, we got what Hassan Endam versus Ryan Maruta. Uh, we've seen him a few times on the top-ranked cards, undercards, and top-ranked TV, and whatever. And Gunnigan Lopez versus Ken Shiro. And our boy, uh, Chorios. How do, you, how, do you, how do you pronounce his name? His nickname, anyway. Navarrete's nickname. Churritos. Churritos. Churritos Hernandez. Yeah. Um, Juan Navarrete Churritos Hernandez. And he's on the card as well. So a pretty good card from Japan on the Saturday. And we'll get to the one on the Sunday later. But you got any thoughts on this one? Um, yeah. I mean, I think the the fight that uh, a lot of our listeners are probably most interested in is the Hassan and Dom versus Ryota Murata fight. Just because of the fact that it's for the vacant WBA uh, middleweight championship, so basically mandatory position for the Canelo Golovkin winner. So you know this fight definitely has uh, some major stakes at hand, especially if uh, Murata wins it. Um, I think the fight is going to be really good though between these two. You know this is definitely a step up for Murata. Um, for Endom, you know he's come back after the Olympics in a major way, just blasted out Alfonso Blanco, who was actually you know, a, f- a pretty good fighter um, in his own right. Uh, and you know I think this is a good fight. Uh, you know, good step up for for Morata and everything, and you know I think he he's a good boxer puncher. I slightly favor Morata to win the fight, but I'm not sure um, how easy it's going to be for him. You know, I think Hassan and Dom, even in the losses to Quillen and Lemieux, gave both of them absolute hell. You know, even as he was getting dropped, he was winning rounds against them, um, just giving them a tough out. They they had to work for every round that they they won against them. So if Morata is able to beat him conclusively um, and comprehensively, uh, that'll be a big boon um, in terms of uh, his stature as a, as a middleweight and everything. You know, he's got an extremely great uh, background, you know, Olympic gold medalist. Um, I think had like about almost 90 stoppages as an amateur in about 120 wins, which is, you know, pretty impressive with the, those big-ass gloves and only a few rounds. Um, so him versus Andam, I think, is, is, can and uh, will be a pretty uh, pretty fun fight to watch. You know, Andam, I think, is coming coming back with a vengeance looking to try and get, an, you know, his another run at a title. Um, so he's going to be throwing with power. You know, I think Murata is always throwing with power. A good boxer puncher, and I think it's good. I think it's going to be a solid fight between the two. Leon, you got any thoughts on the end um, Murata fight? Again, I haven't seen much of Murata. What, what's his resume like? I mean, who's he, you said he's been on some top rank cards. Who, who's he kind of been fighting? Nobody. Uh, I mean, really, really low, lower level guys for the most part. Guys that he's been knocking over pretty quick for for the most part. 
But that's my concern. Like, this is a pretty big step for Murata and It is. I've always had a soft spot for Endam. Um, um, and if he's on the back foot, which he usually is, um, Murata, from what I've seen, like, he's a bit kind of flat footed. If he's chasing, if he's chasing Endam around, I think I'd favour Endam, uh, just because I think his foot works better and he'll be able to pick him off with that long jab. But I think it'll be one of those fights where, like, Endam will have success and then he'll get dropped. Then he'll have a bit more success and then he'll get dropped. And then it'll it all kind of depend on obviously scoring and stuff. But if if, if he just does enough in in the later rounds to pick up, it, what I've always had with Japanese scoring, they've always been quite fair. So um, if Endam does enough, doesn't get dropped too many times, um, I think he can probably take the fight. You know, because it's the lack of decent op- uh, opponents that Murata's had that's kind of sticking in the back of my mind. But, yeah, it's one, it's one of those things where he hasn't had that that situation where an opponent's really been there, like, in it to win it, like, yeah. the way that some, some other fighters have had. What are you going to say, Liam? But Endam's a good choice of gatekeeper, isn't he? Because he didn't, although he iced that guy, he's not been known to be the most... Puncher. The biggest, biggest puncher. And he's been dropped multiple times so yeah. he's a risk but there's enough flaws that you're willing to risk your guy against i guess yeah yeah but like you yeah, can make definitely. even though he's winning a fight you can make him look like he's losing a fight like kind of quillen did you know yeah, yeah. but it's, it's a shame that dibble be pulling that bullshit because what happened to them like streamlining the the belts and you know oh it's again for the wba vacant world middleweight title. Just, <laughs> yeah, what, what, is it what, another interim well, it's, it's well, like the regular. When, 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 I, when Adam beat Super. Blanco, that was for the interim, and then now this is for the regular. Apparently, it's, it's stupid, really weird. It's fucking it's WBA. I hate these motherfuckers. I think we need to just dis- disregard. What the fuck? What the fuck did Golovkin just win off? What did Jacobs have? Is that WBO regular? That was the WBA. Uh, Super? No, no, that was the WBA. Super the regular. Oh. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, now off. Golovkin had the super and Jacobs had the regular, I think. Yeah, so they that they yeah. form that into one belt now, have they? And then and then it got disbanded and it's gone to uh, Japan now to uh, to get fought over this weekend. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, so it is that belt? Yeah, basically. Yeah, that, that's what I don't yeah. understand. What happened Fuck to sake. them streamlining this shit? It's obviously they, they talk about doing it, but they don't actually fucking do it. It's insane. They did it at a few weight classes, but they stopped very abruptly. But, why uh, do these number two guys who are like number two in the division? Why do they need or fucking deserve a belt? That's the, it's there to keep them happy, isn't it? It's like no, just it looks better. Doesn't on the need a belt. Just fight think it the guy's got the, the belt. Poster. Fight him. Yeah, it's bullshit, man. But uh, Nicky, you want to go bullshit. through the other two fights I mentioned? Because I don't know shit about. Uh, them. Apart from yeah, Red, um, I've seen him before. Who? Um, Chucheritos. Okay, um, I'll get to, to Lopez Kinshiro uh, first then. Um, to me, like really good fight. Um, Ganigan Lopez is, to me, either the best or the second best fighter at 108 pounds right now. I mean, just the wins that he has behind him, really solid. Um, you know, even even though he lost to uh, Pedro Gavada before he beat Yuki Motor, who beat Gavada to, to get this um, title. I think actually you might remember that, Cam, uh, because I remember... Um, What's his name? I am the referee. That dude was was refereeing was refereeing a couple of his fights because um, he lost to Gavada, Gavada lost to Kimura, and then uh, Lopez beat yeah, Kimura like to, to get the WBC fights title. In there where he beat him, but he beat him. Yeah, yeah, but um, you know he's a really good fighter. Really, he's kind of a you know southpaw brethren for you. Uh, you know, slick southpaw. You know, pretty tall for the weight class, five five, and he's one of those kind of uh, skinny rail type fighters. Um, but he's actually really good on the inside, you know, unlike a lot of uh, guys that are a bit tallish for the division. Really good uh, body work from him. You know, he's, he's, he's really deceptive in there because he has like a funky stance, um, you know, very, very good defensively and, you know, really good at countering. Um, Ken Shiro is kind of a more um, textbook boxer puncher. Uh, I think he's a bit bigger than, than Lopez. He has a little bit more um, size and strength on him. But I'm not necessarily sure if he's enough of a physical fighter to really make it into the type of a, a slugfest that I think might favor him over Lopez. I think Lopez will outbox him the way he kind of did uh, Kimura in a lot of in a lot of um, facets. Uh, you know, I think it's it's really going to take a guy that both has the physicality and the skill set in order to beat somebody like Lopez because you know he he is that good. Um, so I favor Lopez in that one. 
and then uh, getting on to Chirito Hernandez versus um, Daigo Higa. Higa is a is a mean puncher, man. He's twelve and zero with twelve knockouts, perfect knockout record. And you could tell that by the way he fights, he believes in his power. Um, you know, he he has a bit of that kind of methodical boxer puncher, um, front foot boxer puncher style to him. Um, I guess you might say a little bit of uh, poor man's Golovkin in there, uh, in the fact that you can kind of see some of his punches coming, even including the jab, but it comes at a, at a at really good timing and with a lot of power. I mean, he's definitely sacrificing a little bit of speed for just having full leverage on every shot, and he's hurting you. You know, he's one of those guys that um, some one of the few at the lower weight classes where it's like you could see that he's carrying power, and you could see it when he lands on his opponents, the way his opponents are reacting to when he's hitting them. Um, Hernandez, though, um, you know, he he's a guy that he's so quick, he's so damn fast uh, on, with his feet, with his hands. You know, he has the, the, the kind of a mini Roy Jones uh, style to him. He's very improvisational. He's bouncing back and forth between Southpaw and Orthodox. I think he's probably too quick for Higa. Um, you know, just a little bit too explosive as well. Uh, but he can leave his chin hanging out there a little bit at times too, in, in the midst of that. You know, kind of like a like, like a Roy Jones. So if I mean, if he goes able to kind of track him down, uh, cut off the ring, and land those big shots, um, you know, he he could get him out of there potentially. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Hernandez has, has fought big punchers in the past. His last fight against Nalapan was a big puncher back when he fought Costa at uh, 105 for the championship. That was a, that was a big puncher, and you know, he's definitely survived it in the past. And um, you know, given him uh, at the very least, even Yoka uh, really really solid fight, one of his better fights of his career. Um, so I think it's going to be really difficult for Higa. Uh, you know, it's really just a matter of if he can cut it off the ring. Because if he can't, I think Hernandez is going to just dance circles around him, do almost like a um, Carlos Quadras esque, you know, uh, kind of um, speed showcase. But um, you know, I think Higa is a lot more live than uh, than Shiro is against uh, Lopez. You know, just because he has so much power. Uh, quickly, near to the is in the Japanese card on the Saturday. Um... I think I saw this dude around New Year's time, uh, Tanaka, when he bought when he beat the shit out of Moses Winters. Yeah, he's, he's defending yeah, his title. Uh, yeah. yeah, interestingly, the, he's fighting another guy that's got a completely perfect knockout record. Um, Angel Acosta from Puerto Rico. Uh, he's a little bit chinny himself. Acosta is. You know, he can get a little bit wild in there. Um, uh, no pun intended, but he has, you know, when, when he has an opponent hurt, he'll get a little bit like Deontay Wilder. You know, he'll start just swinging for the fences, trying to just, you know, take your head off, which can be good and it can be bad. I mean, Tanaka has been hurt before, um, particularly at 105 pounds, but I'm wondering if it might have been him being weight drained, especially considering the fact that he's looked a lot better since moving up to 108. And even when he fought at 112 um, last year, he fought, he fought a fight at flyweight and he looked really impressive in that fight, completely schooled and knocked out his opponent who was a high-level opponent. Um, and, you know, he's talked about winning weight classes, winning titles in five different weight classes. So, I mean, he's trying to do like a, a second Nagi Inoue type of, type of deal. And you could tell, that, I mean, just by looking at his body, he's definitely, you know, a pretty big guy to be making, you know, the lowest weight classes in, in the, uh, the sport of boxing. And he's only 21, so he's definitely still growing into his mass strength as well. So, I mean, you could definitely see the potential for that happening. Um, here against Acosta, though, I mean, this is definitely a big uh, test for him especially in terms of that chin. Um, it, it, this uh, this might be a bit of a who gets who first. Um, I think that Tanaka is a bit more skilled, a bit more sharp, and a bit more quick than Acosta, so I favor him to um, stop Acosta, probably, I'd say, in, in the mid-rounds. But it's one of those things where, I mean, he if he gets a little bit too anxious in there for the stoppage, he could definitely be, get clipped himself. And, I mean, he has been hurt in the past, even though he's able to recover from it and he's still fighting back. Um, I'd say that the power, I'd say that, um, Tanaka has the chin advantage and the skills advantage, but Acosta has just the, the overall power advantage. Where it's like I think any one shot from Acosta could hurt Tanaka, um, but uh, but at the same time I don't necessarily think he could just finish him with one shot. If anything, I think Tanaka's uh, skill set is a little bit more um, optimal. So I think uh, I favor him to to actually come home with it and uh, you know potentially go on to be a, you know a future. Uh, HBO American uh, crossover type fighter, uh, possibly. You know, I think he definitely has the potential for it. Nikki, are you gonna try and overdose on sleep during the week so basically you can just stay up all weekend because there's so much boxing on different days in different countries? It's crazy. Man. Yeah, yeah, I gotta try to, man. It's crazy. It is crazy. But I mean, the nice thing about the the, the Japan cards is, um, 
on Saturday and Sunday. You know, it's uh, for you guys in the UK. It's around uh, noon when the, when the main events are happening, so it's not too bad. Yeah, and, but and then of course you know there's all, you could always catch them after the fact. Anyway. Yeah, but um, are they? Do you have? Did, were you saying last week that there's some like streams on YouTube or something or on a website that's free that anyone there, can there, watch? There's one. There's one that's official for the Tanaka Acosta fight. Actually, I'm glad you brought it up because I completely uh, overlooked uh, bringing that up. Um, I'm, uh, there's a CBC. CBC um, hyphen like dash global well, dot JP you, sports. Should, they're 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 going to be broadcasting um, in English with English commentary the uh, Tanaka versus Acosta fight, and then um, the other fights um, on Saturday and Sunday are going to be on uh, Fuji TV. Um, and you know, just hit me up on Twitter. Or, you know, you guys know how to get at me. Well, um, and we should I can, um, I can let you know what, what's up. Can we should tweet out the one that's like a free one that's not a dodgy one. We should tweet that out to everyone. Yeah, we will do and then, definitely. And then people yeah, can yeah. DM. People can DM now for the dodgy one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tanaka versus Acosta. That's uh, that's going to be available free. I'm glad they're doing it. They did it with uh, Tanaka versus Fuentes as well. You know, they're going to have English commentary on it, which is is excellent. that a Sunday? Not, um, no, that's on Saturday. So it'll that's be on Saturday. Saturday. It'll be about three or four a.m. Pacific time, about you know uh, six or seven a.m. Uh, East Coast. And then uh, about, what is that, about 11, 12 uh, for you guys yeah. in the UK? Well, yeah, we'll, we'll check our Twitter. We'll tweet it out for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's a, that's, that's, that's going to be solid viewing. I think that's um, that might be one of the best fights of, of all the fights in Japan. You know? um, Tanaka is a, a guy that's looking for a knockout. Acosta just has nothing but knockouts, so you, you, you can bet your ass he's going to be looking for one. Um, it's going to be a good fight, I think. That's not Maybe, the Endem card, is it? No, no, that's a no, separate one. No, yeah. Yeah. Uh, lastly, on the Sunday, Naoto, 21st of May, we've got Akira Yagashi and Nao Nao Inoue on uh, on a card in uh, Tokyo. Well, they're not fighting each other, but yeah, they're on the same card. Yeah, yeah, Yagashi's fighting uh, Milan Melindo. Good fight for him. Uh, Melindo just recently um, had a, a really good um, fight with uh, Terapongo Taita. Managed to beat him. Um, you know, Melino is probably most well known from his fight with Juan Estrada a few years back. Estrada fought him right after he fought Valoria. I mean, Estrada pieced him up, but you know that's Estrada, one of the best fighters at the lowest weight classes. So it is what it is. You know, this is at a lower weight, obviously, one hundred eight. Um, I think he matches up pretty well against Yagashi. Um, if anything, I, I might favor Yagashi slightly just because of the fact that he's always throwing. Um, he has just a, a fantastic gas tank. I think uh, technically Melindo is a little bit better than than Yagashi, but um, I mean, the power, I think, is kind of a wash. They're about equal in there. So it's really just about, um, is Melindo more technically sound than Yagashi, or is Yagashi's stamina and work rate going to overwhelm Melindo? Um, I favor the latter a little bit more than the former. I favor Yagashi um, slightly into the fight, but I think Melindo is extremely alive in here. This might be... Um, this might be the most even of all the fights, uh, you know. So, I mean, it, just uh, in terms of uh, actual viewing after the fact, I mean, the the only um, thing is it might be more of a distance fight than than a knockout. I can't. It's hard for me to see either of these guys knocking each other out. I think their their chins and their defense is a little bit too good for that, as opposed to the offense. Neither of them are monster monster punchers. So, um, you know, it's it's going to be a bit of an attrition fight between these two. I think. Um, and then Nayu Inoue, he's going to be fighting against uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, basically clearing out a mandatory for the WBO. Um, Rodriguez's best fights probably have been the two that he's had against um, Carlos Quadras. Um, well, actually, was it one or was it two? Um, I'm blinking on it right now. But, I mean, he fought – um I mean, not not Quadras. Um, David Carmona, the guy that just uh, fought Quadras. He, he has uh, two close decision losses to uh, Carmona. Just um, KO'd um, Omar Navarez's brother, Carlos Navarez. Uh and he's, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not Omar Vidal, right? it's his brother, different guy. Um, but uh, Rodriguez, uh, solid fighter. Um, Inoue to me is uh, just too good for him. You know, like I said, he's clearing out a WBO mandatory uh, because there's the possibility of Inoue coming to the U.S. this fall. They, they're trying to already make plans for it. Um, you know, it's all about pending this, this fight, him coming through and coming, in, coming out victorious. And, uh, you know, hopefully he does the job against uh, Rodriguez, as I think he probably should do. Um, Rodriguez is just a sla- pretty much about equal level with Carmona, and in a way, pretty much handled Carmona for the most part. I mean, Carmona gave him uh, an iffy fight, a, a fairly difficult fight, but one that in a way still won clearly, you know, 9-3. to three. Um, So, in a way, should be able to at least do the same type of, type of stuff here against uh, Rodriguez. Uh, you know, we might see... 
um, so, some more flashes of uh, Inoue's skill set, you know, a little bit deeper because Rodriguez is, is a pretty good uh, textbook boxer. But um, I don't think Inoue's in particular uh, trouble against him. Leon, you're going to be in Ruth's bad books if you try and watch all these fights this weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, these, I'll have to catch up with these after the event. <laughs> it's just um, too much. It is too and we're much. And because you go into the card as well, it just makes it impossible, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that just eats up your day. Like, I know like, you guys are saying about the, the Japanese card that's going to get streamed at like midday on, or a bit earlier on the Saturday. Like, I don't even have the chance to watch that because I'll be driving down to London. So I'll oh, be yeah, watch, shit, yeah. watching it on the replay. But um, I've got nothing else except... There were rumours, I don't know, I was reading things, people were tweeting me things, messaging me things about possibly Rung Vasai Choco 2 with Quadras versus um, Estrada, Estrada on the undercard. Like, it, what's going on? Is this rumours? Like, have you guys heard anything? Uh, well, I mean, the WBC ordered both fights, so th- there's a good possibility that it could happen, considering the fact that I mean, now at the very least, HBO has more names than just Gonzalez to promote um, at, at Super Flyweight. And, um, you know, they're talking about it possibly being in L.A. this time. I'd imagine that um, they could definitely pull it off, especially if they do it the week after Canelo Alvarez versus Golovkin. And then they'll replay Alvarez versus Golovkin along with those two fights. Um, I think that's a, that's a good way to do it. That's, you know, t- typically what HBO's done a lot of in the past. Um, Showtime as well. Um, but... You know, I, I could definitely see it happening. Um, you know, I, I think it makes just all the sense in the world, and it's 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 good to have you know big fights uh, put together like that. And you know, so ho- I'm hoping that it is um, on the same card, and uh, you know, uh, on HBO possibly the week after Canelo uh, Golovkin. Capitalize on that. Um, capitalize on the names involved itself, and I mean, uh, hopefully it goes down. Hopefully, hopefully it all it all uh, comes to pass the way that I think. I, I think it has a legitimate shot at doing. If that happens, those two fights on the same card a week after Golovkin, oh my god, man, that's gonna be a holiday and a half. Yeah. Um, Leon, Neil, to anything else? No, not much, is there, really? Nope. Yeah, I think we, I think we burned through about as much as we could. We, we did pretty good. I thought the show was gonna be like ninety minutes max. So for us to get what we did is pretty good. Yep, yep. All right. I want to thank you guys for jumping on. All yeah, the people was, in the uh, chat. Yeah. Did yeah. you hear Femi give a, oh, a ghost like? Did I hear Femi give what, what Dan? Uh, a toast to his boys uh, when they're having dinner, like him and her and, and the rest of his friends. Yeah, it's pretty cringy to be honest. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was inspired by it, man. Made me want to push and grind harder. Did you see that he's going on a like a victory tour? Really? Is he coming to Los Angeles? Nah, unfortunately not. I'll fly over for that. Honestly, we'll do a coalition <laughs> meeting. Or eight, uh, victory. I'm down. What's happening, Dan? You you want to talk about anything? No, just uh, you know, if if that fight does happen, you know, you're always welcome to stay at my place, and uh, you know, I'll give you a massage and a deep tissue massage and we'll have some fun uh, uh, uh. <laughs> are we still live uh, yeah we are but I'll be I'll be screaming like Charles Martin the way he was screaming when he was getting a deep tissue massage but um, Dan like is your place clean like is not is, is it not messy like the back of your car I don't know man like like I mentioned I'm I'm shopping for uh, an apartment right now so it's going to be at least clean for a couple of days I would assume can we have a subway like every day or no Oh, yeah, most definitely. Anybody from the coalition then to accept, you know, a couple of people. <laughs> um, all right, Dan. You sure there's nothing else you want to talk about? I don't you did uh, this, this me afterwards that I, I, didn't, I didn't let uh, you burn. No, no. It's good luck to Rodriguez. Um, you know, he's really, uh, he's a really great guy. He moved here. Uh, he moved to LA with his wife, like, you know, three, four years ago. He's a really, really good, good guy. Um, but I think he's going to get his ass kicked because he's, he's just not good enough. And it's so funny. They were doing a documentary, and um, this one guy was interviewing. He interviewed me, so I might be on some kind of random-ass documentary, but I pretty <laughs> much said, like, oh, this great 50-50 fight. You know, David's improved so much in the gym lately. Like, his fundamentals are so textbook, and I've only seen, seen the guy spar, like, once. 
Um, and I told him that it's going to be like a 50 50 fight with uh, Inoue, and I don't believe it at all. I think he's going to get <laughs> fucked. Because he's small for that weight class, yeah, too, man. They're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're probably going to broadcast you on Japanese TV, Lim, so I'll definitely have the video for that if you want. <laughs> I mean, talking about you know they find they find they find an Asian dude in there and they're like oh shit like he's legit right <laughs> no but anyways good luck to him man uh, but yeah he's he's too small for the weight class and I think anyway he's a pretty big dude for that weight so I don't think it's gonna end uh, you know too well for, for my guy but good luck to him I think he's gonna get paid pretty well so I'm happy for him at least but other than that nah, not much to say and Javon I don't know anything about Liam Walsh so I don't I don't know I can't really comment on that but. Um, I think Gervonta is a pretty good prospect, but obviously he's too young so that he's not going to fight Lomachenko. Um, but I think he's good enough to like take over that division in a couple of years. Definitely. All right. Cheers, Dan. Neo to Leon, thank you. All the people in the chat and all the people that download the show week in, week out. We'll be back next week. Peace. You just listened to the Boxing Coalition. I did. Man, I love boxing. I fucking love boxing. A big shout out to the Boxing Coalition. You're a newbie. No, I ain't new, man. If my fucking next door neighbor became the number one flyweight in the world, you know what I'd do? I'd fucking walk past the country. Derek, how you doing, bro? I was physically bad, you blood. I disagree. First time I hear the song, man, it was fucking badass. Vamos a Argentina, la concha de su madre. I see the bum in them. I get home and she's like, what the fuck? Me and the kid are here. Why don't you get home and talk to us? I'm like, man, you guys don't know shit about boxing. Kel. How does it feel to be the new IBF champion? Feels great. Feels great. Do we really dive into the black hole right off the jump? I think he's hiding glass. Just to play devil's advocate. You want one portion of crow or two portions of crow? Give me uh, two portions with a super-sized fries and, um, and a large drink, please. I can't stand him while I'm Scottish. Cringe side. But you won't crush Anthony fucking fat-ass Joshua, would you? He's not fat. Yeah, How about you tell us what you weight for your final thoughts? <laughs> My weight? Thank you for listening to the Boxing Coalition. We are live every Monday, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. UK time, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern.